and dreams remain untarnished. It's week one of the college football season. We're in Frankfort, Kentucky, and it's the Kentucky State Thoroughbreds and the Clark Atlanta Panthers. Good evening, friends, and welcome aboard. That's Justin Brantley. I'm Derek Decker. So glad you'd be with us here tonight. And JB, fun matchup on tap. Couple of teams that have very high hopes coming into this brand new 2023 season. Derek, it's exciting. Week one, there's nothing like it. Guys have worked all offseason long to prepare for this moment. It's a beautiful day. The sun's shining. Both teams come in, like you said, with high hopes and high expectations. So it's going to be exciting to see how this transpires. Yeah, certainly some new looks for both teams on both sides of the ball. Not too many returning players, but definitely new look offenses, especially with Kentucky State. Absolutely. With Kentucky State going from you know, an option offense where they were heavily run focused to spreading it out and throwing the ball around, it's going to be really exciting to see here. You guys are in for a treat. So much fun on tap. Should be competitive. Kentucky State, Clark Atlanta coming up next. This is how it starts with the 2023 McDonald's Change Leaders. Ten young black visionaries who've started something legendary. They're challenging what you think you know. They're speaking up, showing up, and loving up on our communities. Because they know when you start something, you can change everything. Meet the 2023 McDonald's Change Leaders. Find out what they're up to at mcdchangeleaders.com. As parents, we pay out the for school. So here's a novel idea. Just spend less on your kids. Amazon has great deals on everything kids need. Instead of spending more, he spent less. Why would a person spend more money? He's eight and he gets it. I'm 10. Hmm, that's less impressive. Spending less costs less, financially. I spend less on my grandkids. <laughs> and they don't even know it. So spend less on your kids with Amazon's back to school deals. It's fiscally advantageous. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. Car designers can shape a piece of clay into a piece of art. So why don't they? At Nissan, things are different. They design cars that look like swords. Gladiators. The future. Or, wow. Nissan knows what thrill looks like because they design it into every car they make. Welcome back to Alumni Stadium here in Frankfort, Kentucky. It's Kentucky State and Clark Atlanta with Justin Brantley. I'm Derek Decker. And as you mentioned, JB, should be so fun to watch here tonight. Plenty of competitive players on the field. Lots of returning guys, but lots of new ones as well. And the teams are meeting right now. The captains on the field ready for the initial coin toss here this evening. Long trip for Clark Atlanta, but this is a group that Willie Slater believes in here to start the season. Oh, absolutely. Willie talked a lot about getting those winning ways rolling there at Clark Atlanta, getting those guys accustomed to and used to coming out and performing in big games, and there's no game bigger than opening off the season on a Thursday night here on HBCU+. Plus. Let's take a look at some of the players to watch for tonight's ball game, and again, this will be uh, a number of different guys that could be impactful. Clark Atlanta brings out an experienced defense and a group that has a lot of guys that have come back from last season, and that includes Cameron Ivey, who has stepped up to lead this squad in the secondary. This is a defense last year that kind of struggled, but Willie Slater expects some improvement from last season's 3-7 and seven squad. Absolutely. You know, offense sells tickets, but defense wins games. And Willie <laughs> talked about you know, just being able to work with those guys and having a full offseason, having some continuity with his staff. This is going to be a good opportunity for them to see kind of that growth and development from year to year, which is what you look for when you're leading a program. Yeah, meanwhile, for Kentucky State, we talked about it in the open, about them transitioning from a triple option offense out to a spread for head coach Felton Huggins Jr. In his very first game as a head coach here at the collegiate level, they dominated time of possession last year, had the ball almost 35 minutes a game, second in the entire nation. It's going to be an entirely different looking offense here tonight. Absolutely, and Coach Huggins talked a lot about controlling the line of scrimmage on, on both sides of the ball. I think it's going to be interesting to see how they're able to make this happen and bring it out and really, you know, in that first year, set the tone for what we're going to see from Kentucky State football moving forward. 
All right, let's look, take a look now at a couple of the key players to watch here this evening. We start with Kentucky State, and it all begins with the quarterback, Christian Perez. Jaden Hale, another guy that was talked about a lot by Coach Huggins. Jaden Hale is a guy that they want to get the ball to in space, give him an opportunity to make plays, be athletic. Uh, he talked highly about this young man, so I'm looking forward to seeing him perform. And now for Clark Atlanta, a squad that was 3-7 and seven last season. Uh, Daquan Kinsey is the running back for them. He was the main bell cow last season. The junior from Alabama is expected to get the bulk of the carries tonight as well. Yeah, and one of the things that Kentucky State talked about is they have to be able to stop the run game, especially the improvised run game. They don't want to allow the quarterback to get into a scramble mode and now extend the play, and they have to go from 7 seconds to 8 seconds to 9 seconds. All right, real quick, JB, tonight's keys to the game. We touched on it a little bit. Obviously, the lines, right? Um, well, let's start with number one, the thoroughbred spread. Going from a particularly run-heavy offense – that has always relied on you know, getting out there, running an option, and now spreading it out. And we're going to get an early look at it because they're receiving the ball here early at home. Tonight's keys are driven by Nissan, and we are underway here from Alumni Stadium in Frankfort, Kentucky. And the Thoroughbreds will have the football first. Average starting field position out to the 26-yard line, and that will bring on the starting quarterback, Christian Perez, who... Doesn't have a lot of playing experience, but this is a guy who has bounced around quite a bit. Originally from Illinois, started his career at Navy, then he redshirted at Louisville, ended up in three games at SEMO, had a knee injury there, and finds himself now where he feels like he'll have the best impact at Kentucky State. Absolutely, and you know, Sometimes guys getting a new opportunity, uh, seeing a, a, a different, hearing some different voices, seeing a different group of guys is going to be an opportunity for him to turn it up a notch. Chad Alexander's in the backfield next to him on first down. Play action. Big shot on the first play of the game. Jump ball. And well played in the secondary. Not wasting any time at all getting into that spread offense, letting the ball fly. But the other thing I'm noticing is they're not huddling up. They're quickly back to line of scrimmage. They're ready to call the next play. Yeah, this is just so different from the Kentucky State team that we saw last year. It's second and ten on this opening drive. And you're right, completely no huddle from the outset, trying to establish the tone. Over the middle, and too tall for the intended slot man, Jaden Hale, and it's third and long. Now, this is what makes it tough. You know, when you come out and you have two quick plays, put you in a third and ten, third and long, here you're kind of limited on what play you can run next, right? And that's why, you know, you look for a little bit of balance in the run game, but it's good to see it looks like they went to a little deeper backfield. We'll see what they do here. Third and ten for the Thoroughbreds, who have thrown it twice on this opening series and have missed on both attempts. Perez flushed toward the sideline, heaves it to the middle of the field, and that's incomplete as Perez falls out of bounds. Broken play from the start, good pressure up the middle by the Panthers' front line. Absolutely. So the Panthers, they held steady. You know, this is what you want in that opening drive. They kicked and covered very well. They were able to control that. Everybody stayed in their lanes. Defensively, they honored their assignments. This is how you want to start your season off. I'm sure they're excited going back to the sidelines. D coordinators probably hyping them up. Obviously, they always find something that they can critique and get better at. But that's a good way to set the tone from this Clark Atlanta defense. The boot from Birdsong. Gets the friendly roll. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Scramble. And I think Clark Atlanta has recovered. And they are fortunate. Special teams disaster on the first trip. It will be Panthers ball at the 30-yard line. Yeah, that was, that was close. Um, it almost ended up being Kentucky State ball. Going downfield there, I saw Joseph Douglas. He had an opportunity to recover it. He wasn't quite able to find the ball on the ground there. Jalen Hood, the man who initially touched it. And again, it almost 
came crumpling down for Clark Atlanta to start the game. So now we see what the Panthers can do offensively. This is a group that, honestly, at some junctures of last season, didn't have difficulty scoring. It's a penalty against Clark Atlanta here, so they're going to be backed up to the 20-yard line. But this is a Panthers squad that definitely during points of the season last year scored at will. Yeah, and this was a point of emphasis for Kentucky State with the defensive line. So it's going to be interesting to see strength against strength, power against power, see what Clark's able to do here on this opening drive if they're able to match the tone that their defense set. Panthers bring back two of their top three receivers from last season, Ronnie West and Darren Stevens. Williams gives to Kinsey, and he's wrapped up near the line of scrimmage. That's a great job there by the D-line, able to get penetration, but also not, able, not over pursuing. These are definitely two different looking offenses, and certainly first drive of the year. You know, you've been through it before. What goes through your mind? You know, first drive of the season, just trying to get the butterflies out here on game one. Yeah, you know, this is where you're able, finally able to let loose, right? Like this is what you've been working for all offseason long, all those early mornings, those late nights, those film studies. Kinsey, no room again. Wow. Swallowed up for a loss of three. Again, that's that front, that front line that Coach talked about. That's interesting you bring that up because when we were chatting with Felton Huggins Jr. and the defensive coordinator Earl Chambers, he was talking about, of course, Huggins was at McNeese, and he said the front four is as big as these guys were at McNeese. And, of course, that's a D1 program, 6'4", 275, the average up front for the thoroughbreds. Yeah, and when you're looking across the line and you see that size, that's enough to make you say, Coach, we might want to audible out of this play. <laughs> Third down and long for the Panthers. Absolutely nowhere to go. First series going the wrong direction for the Panthers, and the Thoroughbreds defense responds. So it's interesting to see the polarity of these two teams, right? Kentucky State started off three straight throwing, pass, uh, throwing plays. Clark Atlanta, three straight running plays. Well, at least the first trip through, it didn't go well for either one of them. So trying to find their footing here off the outset. Claudio Quintanilla, the kicker, is back for Clark Atlanta. He'll boot it away from his own goal line. First series lost six yards in the wrong direction for Clark Atlanta. That was after a special teams penalty. High short kick. Takes a bounce and then bounces off of a Panther. And it'll be thoroughbred football in plus territory to start their second drive. Great field position to start this second drive. This is an opportunity for them to air it out a little bit, try and get some confidence with their offense, confidence with their quarterback. You mentioned, you know, sometimes when you bounce around a little bit, your confidence can get shaken. He's able to settle in here. If he can make something happen on this drive, I'm sure they'll be extremely excited and happy going into that next possession. Just a 32-yard boot from Quintanilla. And once again, out comes Christian Perez. Again, didn't even, they had one play action play on that first drive, but... Mainly looking to pass, and we expect that a lot here tonight. Here's the give. Chad Alexander gets a few on first down. And, you know, I'm an old-school football guy. I love to see runs on first down. You know, obviously, back in the day, it was the three yards and a cloud of dust. But in this situation, <laughs> being able to get positive yards on first down opens up the playbook and allows you to have multiple things you can do after that. This time, it's kept. Perez himself picks up maybe two more to set up third down and medium, and the Thoroughbreds going at breakneck pace. And this is a much better place to be, third and medium versus third and long. You know, now they have, again, the whole playbook is open for them. It's worth bringing up, could be four down territory here too. They're kind of in that middle zone where they could choose to go for it if they don't get it here, assuming they don't have a big loss on this third and five play. Absolutely. I also think, you know, the, the punter has shown a lot of control. This might be a situation where you want to pin Clark deep. Perez, too tall once again. Out of the reach of Markel Cotton. 
And now decision time for Felton Huggins. Looks like the quarterback's staying on the field. It doesn't seem like there was uh, much debating. <laughs> well, now here comes the special teams unit late. So, Yeah, Perez said, Coach, give me a, give me a chance. So both teams sputter here early. Neither team has a first down yet. Well, you know, one of the things that we talked about in those pregame co conferences with the coaches was eliminating the big play. So neither of them have given up a big play. There's been no mistakes made. Nearly a fumble on that one punt return, but there's been no real, you know, dramatic or, or major mistakes made by either of these teams. So you can tell that this offseason has been one that's been full of preparation. It's been full of discipline, and they're both ready to play in this ballgame. Right personnel not on for Clark Atlanta. They burn a timeout. We're back in a moment on HBCU+. Plus. Welcome back to Earth. Thanks, it was pretty life-changing. Dude, it was eight and a half minutes. I didn't even get to finish my burrito. Technology lets you vacation in space, but to get work done on Earth, you need more than technology. You need CDW. So with the Cisco hybrid work environment, we can deliver the same network experience to all your offices. Space spaghetti. Securely connecting your team from anywhere. Houston, we have a solution. We get it, Greg, you've been to space. Cisco makes hybrid work possible. CDW makes it powerful. We never just see the numbers. We see the people. Detroit has just changed so much. You can see what it once was. And then I think about what it can be. As an entrepreneur, it's about how I can give them the tools to empower themselves. If we can just all do something small, all the small things will start to amount to something big. That's why we're here, to help make it happen. So after the timeout, the offense comes back on the field for Kentucky State. They run a fourth and five play. Out route, tipped ball, knocked down. And the Thoroughbreds give it up on downs. That was an interesting decision. Um, I think they had a good play there, just got tipped. But it was very interesting. It looked like the punt team was ready to come out and pin them deep. And they, they changed up during that timeout. And they changed up, oddly enough, after a Clark Atlanta timeout. So it wasn't necessarily by design for Kentucky State. So decent starting field position here now for the Panthers, just like the Thoroughbreds got on their second drive. We'll see what they can do with it. It's always interesting to see the, the mind games the coaches play. Hey, you took a timeout to make sure your punt return unit was out there. Well, guess what? I'm about to put my offense back out there. Heath Williams, grad transfer from Tennessee State. Starting at quarterback tonight for the Panthers. And a first down gain of a half dozen for Daquan Kinsey. Kinsey made a great move there to make his man miss in the backfield. As a running back here, we're going to get a look at it. The penetration was there on the D-line. You have to make somebody miss and get positive yards. That was a great possession there from him. Kinsey, of course... Mentioned earlier on, guy who got the bulk of the carries last year for the Panthers. He's what brings some of the experience back at the skill positions for Clark Atlanta and Willie Slater. High snap, pulled down, can see again, and wrapped up near the 48-yard line. A few yards shy of what could be a first down. Tackled by Trayvon Pope, and if the Pope name sounds familiar, that's because he's the brother of Contavious Caldwell Pope and uh, a recent NBA champion. So certainly uh, the air of a little celebrity on the field tonight for the defense for Kentucky State. You can tell athletic ability runs in that bloodline, <laughs> huh? And uh, Coach Huggins said he's one of the leaders in their secondary, and he expects a lot out of him this season at corner. Third down and three coming up here for the Panthers. Neither team has a first down yet. And now whistles, and I think it's delay a game. Yeah, we're definitely seeing Clark a little bit more deliberate with their pace. You know, they're taking their time. They're trying to get into the right calls, the right sets. Kentucky State wants to move and play fast. But that's a hard penalty to take on yeah. third down. They were in a positive position, third and short. They, they probably could have ran and picked up that first down. Now it's going to be interesting to see how that changes their play call. 
Well, five plays so far for the Panthers and five running plays. And so that kind of illustrates the dichotomy between what these two offenses want to stress. This Panthers squad averaged a buck 47 on the ground a season ago. About half their touchdowns came on the ground. Third and eight. Williams clean pocket. He's got a man. It's caught. Far sideline. And a first down, Davian Newson, who appeared in five games last year. The junior from Decatur, Georgia, picks up the first first down of the game for either squad. That was a beautiful pass and catch here. We're going to get another look at it. Just wide open, found him, hit him in a spot where only he could catch it. If he didn't come down with that ball, neither was the defense. So good decision making there from a, a young quarterback. You know, when you're looking at a quarterback like Andrew Banks, who as a sophomore starting leading this team, they're not a big pass-heavy team to step in and make that throw. That was major. Kinsey gets the call, makes a couple of men miss, still on his feet near the 36-yard line. A big first down gain and finally taken down in the second level by Jalen Johnson. He's the leader in the middle for Kentucky State in the linebacking court. I really like the way Kinsey runs the ball. He runs with authority. He's not juking and jiving. He's trying to get downhill and run somebody over. But if he catches you with your head down, he's going to make you miss. So I really like what he brings to the table. So it sets up second down and short here. And neither team has been in this situation yet. Kinsey again. Ball's on the ground, and it's picked up by Kentucky State, at least initially. We'll see who comes out from the bottom of the pile. The thoroughbreds were the first to touch it. We'll see if he got it wrestled away from him at the end, but the Clark Atlanta defense already coming on the field. Commentator's curse. I, I, I gave Kinsey a little bit too much praise there. He, Cardinal sin, he drops the ball on the ground. You know, as a running back, you have to hold on to the ball. Here we're going to get another look at it. I attribute that to the penetration by the D-line there from Kentucky State. They were in the backfield. There was nowhere for him to go. They're gang tackling. It's not one person that's trying to bring him down. They're swarming to the ball, all hats on the ball, and when you do that, good things happen. Kentucky State, let's see how they can capitalize and if they can turn that, that turnover, which is what we talked about, right? Both coaches talked about limiting the turnovers and limiting the big plays. Let's see if Kentucky State can capitalize on that opportunity. And Kentucky State wasn't all that great at uh, being opportunistic defensively last year. Only forced 12 turnovers on the season in a 10-game slate. Handoff on first down. This time it's Lavelle Hill for the first time. Positive yards. He fell forward for about three there. Certainly expect to see a rotation of different guys in. It's week one. You know, you got to try to get your guys some reps here in this first week. But already, defense is winning out so far. And one team turning it over on downs, the other on a fumble. Still waiting to see who's going to capitalize. Screen pass. Man, absolutely leveled. DeMarco Fishback taken down near the line of scrimmage. No game. Well, that didn't surprise me. You know, seeing him out in space, that's something Coach talked about getting his guys into space and making things happen early. I, I look to see a little bit more of that. Less deep balls, more getting guys in space. Like, here we have twins. I, like, I look to see them throw short here. Thoroughbreds still searching for their first first down. They went without one on either of their first two drives. Now third down and long once again. Perez has time. Dumps it off. Hale near the line to gain. And he's got a first down, but there's a penalty marker in the backfield. Yeah, and that's going to be roughing the passer. But again, we talked earlier about getting Hale the ball in space and letting him make plays. That's exactly what he did there. But here you're going to see after he made that catch, gets north and south, gets upfield. He knows where the sticks are. He knows the yard to reach. With that rough in the passer in the backfield there, it's going to tack on some extra yards, it appears. 
So that'll add 15 to the end of the play. And so now the Thoroughbreds starting to march towards scoring position here. And you like to play call on third down and long there, clearing everybody out and leaving a guy in the middle. I love it. Get your players the ball in space. Uh, a short pass and catch. It's almost like a free throw in basketball. Allows the quarterback to start to get his confidence. And, and now you can go with deep balls. Big run up the middle on first down. DeMarco Fishback wiggles out of a couple of tackles and gains eight. And they're going in a hurry on second and short. Screen pass once again. And that's enough for a first down. Jonathan Howard on the catch. And the connection goes for four to move the chains. It appears that Kentucky State started to identify their flow. They know what's going to work for them. They're spreading out the field. They're incorporating some run into it to keep those linebackers honest. It's going to be interesting to see if they're able to keep this thing going and capitalize. Another short pass. Markel Cotton near the sideline. Shoved out inside the 15. Cameron Ivey on the stop for the Panthers. The junior from Atlanta and kind of the outspoken leader on defense for the Panthers. Second down and four coming up for the Thoroughbreds. And this is the first trip for either team into the red zone. It's important to get points in these situations. I see the kicker warming up just in case. It's important to convert these opportunities into points on the board. Yeah, that's Mason Malik, the grad student, warming on the sideline. Malik does have some range. We'll talk about that more in a moment. Second and four. Around the edge. Fishback steps back in. He's in for a touchdown. DeMarco Fishback from 15 yards out. And Kentucky State on the board first. Yeah, you talked about the range that he has. It doesn't look like we're going to have to see that. But here we get another look at that run. Great ability to see his blocks ahead of him. Those receivers blocking downfield, you have to love it. That's what any coach looks for. They look for their receivers to get downfield, make strong blocks. Even when you're not getting the ball, how involved are you in the offense? Great job there from the Kentucky State offense. Malik's extra point splits the uprights, and it's 7-0 thoroughbreds. Well, that's how you capitalize on a turnover. You have to take advantage of those opportunities, get points on the board. Great job there from Kentucky State. It looked like they found their way, right? They got into a rhythm. They started to roll. If they can keep this thing going, it's going to be hard to beat them. Almost a 60-yard drive there, and certainly under control on that drive. Converted a couple of times in important situations, aided by a penalty that put them in prime real estate, and then they capped it off with a touchdown. Absolutely. I, I just really think having a safety net like Hale in the back, uh, in, in, in the slot, where you can throw him the ball in space and let him do what he needs to do, it just changed the whole dynamic of the offense. It was exciting to see them utilize him. I know they talked about him a lot pregame, but... Being able to throw those short routes and get positive yards really opened up the offense for them, and it opened up the running game. So we're going to have a lot of opportunities to see what they're capable of doing offensively. Now, one of the things we talked about is how do you, how do you respond to adversity? What is Clark going to do here? Are they going to take that and say, okay, hey, we've got to go back and we've got to score, or are they going to look at that and start to hang their head? Now you're going to see what your team is made of. Both coaches really touched on that when we talked to them earlier this week about the importance of seeing how their teams would respond. It's one of those week one, it's not necessarily a cliche, but one of those things that you're always going to learn as a head coach is when stuff starts hitting the fan, how do our guys respond? And we're going to find out here for Clark Atlanta. And who can I rely on? It's, right. a, it's important to know who can I rely on. Who, can, who really wants that opportunity to, to fix things and turn things around? Leadership is not about you know who's rah-rah on the sidelines. Leadership's about who's going to get out there and, and make some actions to change whatever's happening out there on the field. So they had the wrong football out there. They had to switch to the kicking football. You wouldn't know anything about that. <laughs> Listen, kickers, we can be a little bit particular. <laughs> we, 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 like to, we, we like to know what we're kicking with. We like a certain ball, certain air pressure, all of those things. Sometimes we can even be called quirky. <laughs> Returnable here for, oh, it's a big hole. Huge hole to the outside. 
Jalen Hood down the sideline and finally knocked out of bounds in Kentucky State Territory. Huge return on special teams for Clark Atlanta. Absolutely. So here we're seeing a squib kick, which a lot of a lot of teams employ that. The ball bounces around, and if it's a good bounce, it can work in your favor. But in that situation, bounced right into his hands, and the defense wasn't able to get down there to cover quick enough, left too many open lanes. We're going to see if Clark can, can take advantage of that. I mean, we talked about responding. That was a big response. Let's see if they can continue that response and put some points on the board. Doesn't have to be a touchdown. They don't have to get all seven back right now, but just respond to that. Penalty flag out. Can see a negligible first down game, and we'll check the marker. Looks like a false start they're going to call. Oh, legal formation, okay. Yeah. So five in the backfield there for Clark Atlanta, and that'll back him up. Again, that's, that's the sort of stuff that sometimes you see in week one, not being completely on point and precise with lining up before the play. Those are the little things that you have to get worked out in week one, right? Like, nobody wants to see those mental mistakes, but if you're going to see them, you want to see them in the first half of week one. So behind the chains on first and 15. Williams to pass. And that's wrapped off incomplete. That JB a, and Tony, the, inst the intended man. That was a great job there defensively. You know, seeing just the, the pursuit. That was Joshua Johnson. He got downhill, found the quarterback in the backfield. That's one of the things that the coach talked about is not allowing them to extend plays, not allowing the quarterback to run and you really put them in a bad position on the back end of the play. Jeremiah Owens, the D-end, also put a hit on Williams, the QB there at the end of the play. He was their leading sack man last year on defense. So it's second and 15 for Clark Atlanta. Williams wrapped up. He's going down. Owens leads the charge again. And Isaiah Thomas combines for the sack. Listen, we didn't talk much about it. Here we're going to get a look at it. When we had that conversation with Coach, he talked about their blitz packages. He talked about their ability to get after the quarterback and wanting to you know, really implement those blitzes early and often. That's a look at it right there. Yeah, Earl Chambers was very boisterous when talking about the blitz package that they would dial up early and often in this game. We have seen it early. And there honestly haven't been that many dropbacks yet for the Panthers, so that was a good look of what this defense can be for Kentucky State. Now third and forever for the Panthers. Whistles before the snap, blow this play dead. And it's a false start. Yeah, we've been moving in the wrong direction here. Clark Atlanta had a great kick return, had beautiful field position, and now we're at third and 30 nearly. God, imagine you go conservative here and, and just try to take your chance with the punt. Third and almost 30. Yeah, you know, this is where, like I talked about with Kentucky State, getting your guys in the slot open, getting some positive yardage, giving somebody an opportunity to make a play. They potentially could break something, but if not, you give yourself, like you said, a little bit more space to get that punt off and getting downhill and putting Kentucky State in a, in a less opportune situation. Draw. Going nowhere. Kinsey that, lost another. That D-line is swarming right now for Kentucky State. Man, and it is huge, too. We, we said it, man. It just is a big front four for Kentucky State, averaging 6'4", 275 across the board. And they've got a guy like Bubba Johnson up front. That guy was a former quarterback in high school at 350 pounds. So a guy who understands what to do up front on defense, and they have shown their ability to make some plays. They've already... Forced to fumble and recovered it. Picked up a sack as well on this drive. And Kentucky State's defense making a statement out of the gate for a coach in Felton Huggins who certainly prides himself on his offensive abilities and his schemes. Former NFL guy. Well, he talked about Coach Chambers and the strength of 
what he brings to the table and why he had to have him with him as his defensive coordinator. And we're seeing why here. Flags everywhere. This is going to be too many men for the thoroughbreds. One was late getting off, trying to come to the near sideline. Yeah. Yeah, we saw them trying to get their guys off, trying to get them into alignment. Unfortunately, didn't have enough time to, get, to make that happen. Referee's going to take a while to talk about it, make sure, make sure they're spotting the ball at the right place. Fire Atlanta gets choice here if they want to tack this onto the end or re-kick? It's a good question. You know, the first punt wasn't magnificent earlier. That punt was pretty solid. If I'm in that situation, do I want to risk a chance of maybe a worse field position for my defense or a blocked punt or anything of that nature? I think in this situation, have them walk it off. It's going to put them around the 25-yard line. Be a great position for Clark Atlanta's defense to dial up some things. So the Thoroughbreds will start on their own 29. Leading by seven here early on. And it has been a bit of a choppy first quarter. Again, some of the kinks still getting worked out. No real long drives yet, except the last one for Kentucky State that went just over 50 yards for a score. Here's the give on first down. Not much there for Lavelle Hill. Maybe a yard before he's picked up and driven back. Yeah, one thing I'll say with Christian Perez, he seems to make the right decisions. You can tell that he's a veteran. He's been playing football for a long time. He's not making any big mistakes. I really like the poise that he's playing under, the speed that he's playing under, the leadership that he's showing there at that quarterback position. Sticking down towards the final minute of this opening quarter. Perez in space. It's caught. And a big game for Markel Cotton. Finally caught at the end as he strides down all the way to the Clark Atlanta 35-yard line. Cameron Ivey made what was probably a touchdown-saving tackle and a huge pickup for Kentucky State. Yeah, you know, just being able to find the holes in the defense, sit down and make that catch. Beyond that, not letting the first man that touches him take him down. Yards after carry, it's something we've talked about quite a bit, and just that quick, another play called by Kentucky State. Yeah, and that's going back to the hot hand, another catch by Cotton, and a first down gain of five. You'll take that every day of the week. The pace they're going at right now reminds me a little bit of the old-time St. Louis Rams. Yeah, it is pretty breakneck pace. They don't have to run another play in this quarter, and they might not. Yeah, it doesn't look like they will. So both teams are walking off, and that brings an exciting first quarter to an end. Kentucky State on the board first. They're driving as well here at home, leading Clark Atlanta 7 to nothing after the first 15. Call a credit repair company to fix my credit. Hold the phone, man. You can do it yourself with Credit Versio. That's way too hard. Call the credit repair company. Most credit repair companies only work on one or two accounts at a time, making it slow and expensive. You won't figure that out for months. <laughs> Ignore him. Credit Versio's brilliant software scans all three credit bureaus, finds the accounts that are hurting your score, and guides you through the entire process. Anyone can do it. 
Let's fast forward and see the results. <laughs> wow, I fixed my own credit and saved hundreds. You can do this. Visit creditversio.com. This all new Aria is an elegant EV. Yeah, with 389 horsepower. And all wheel drive. Ooh. It's beautiful. It's a beast. It's electric. With an edge. Oh, let's go with that. Big play on second down as Kentucky State uses LaVale Hill out of the backfield to get inside the red zone for the second time. And the thoroughbreds driving once again. You know, I'm really impressed watching this game. You know, watching the way that Coach Huggins is dialing up this offense. You know, his ability to just throw different looks at this Clark Atlanta defense. He talked about it a lot. You know, being that first-time head coach, being first year in a new program, this is a, a, a tone-setting moment, and I'm sure the fans here are excited watching this team play. In and out of a tackle, inside the five, touchdown, Chad Alexander from 14 yards out. Three straight running plays, or three straight passing plays to open the game would lead you to believe that this team's going to throw on us. They're going to try to exert their will with their offensive weapons on the outside, but no. He's brought back the running attack, and those guys are running hard. And now the band gets to play. Nothing greater than walking off the field, hearing your band play your fight song. That means something went well. Malik adds the extra point. It is 14 to nothing, Kentucky State. And this already, granted it was a small sample size to start the game, but after the first two drives, this looks like a completely different offense. For sure, for sure. And you talked about getting those early jitters out, right? That first game, that first quarter, you have to get into a rhythm. You have to start to make plays and have some success. And that's what we're seeing. We're seeing Christian Perez has came out. He started to identify how he can be successful. He's picking his spots. He's calling a great ball game. You know, he's getting the ball in the right places. I'm, I'm really enjoying this game so far. But again, this is where you see how a team responds to adversity. What does Clark Atlanta do? You're only down two scores. There's still a lot of football left to be played. It's not over by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah, on that side for the Panthers, this is the defense that gave up 34 points a game last year. So certainly Willie Slater trying to make some adjustments here and not all uh, gone according to plan yet. But as you mentioned, the chance for adjustments is here. We're early on in the second quarter and plenty of football left here in Frankfort, Kentucky. Great kickoff. He, he went away from the squib. He said, you know what? I'm just going to take all of the option of a return off the table, put it in the back of the end zone. All right, what do you want to see on this drive from Clark Atlanta? I want to see at least one first down. I want to see positive momentum, and I want to see them start to get an understanding of how they can fight back in this game. Again, 14 points is, by no stretch of the imagination, insurmountable. You don't have to score right here. You just have to get some positive things going, some momentum-building plays, some confidence-building plays. Their offense just needs to show a response here. When you're on the road, you can't have back-to-back-to-back-to-back three and outs. Heath Williams on first down. Bobbled and dropped. Looking for Davion Newsom. One of the other things I don't want to see is I don't want to see Clark go away from their game plan, go away from who they are as a team. And sometimes that's what happens when you get down by a couple scores. You start to air it out and spread it out. You want to try and get some chunk plays to get the game back under control. But again, there's plenty of time left in this ball game. They were doing a great job running the ball, moving the chains. I'd like to see them go back to that. I'd like to see them focus on their running attack here a little bit more. Both Kinsey and Jeremiah Gibbs, who hasn't gotten a touch yet, are in the backfield along with the QB. Play fake. Dump off and incomplete intended for Gibbs. And now it's third and ten. Yeah. 
not the place you want to be at. The other thing that stands out, I mean, seeing Andrew Banks, the pressure that he's facing. From a defensive line perspective, there's two st stats that you're looking for, right? You're looking for sacks, obviously, but you're looking for QB hurries as well. Banks has no time back there. Every time he's dropping back, somebody's touching him, somebody's hitting him. It's hard to operate in that manner, and again, I think the running attack slows that down just a little bit. Third down and 10 for the Panthers. Williams airs it out, and it's too deep. Ronnie West was streaking down the sideline. Newsom in the area, too, and that's a three and out for Clark Atlanta. That was a beautiful ball, by the way. Just wasn't able to connect. Right there. Just looks like their, their feet got tangled up. Incidental contact. I'm glad the ref didn't call anything there. Agreed. Got another punt on the way. Fishback is back to return. Already has a touchdown in this game. Not on special teams. But he's been utilized quite a bit here early on. Here's the boot. It's short. Barely gets into plus territory and rolls out of bounds at the 47. So another great opportunity with good field position for Kentucky State. You know, Kentucky State's rolling right now. This is the last thing you want to do is give them the short field. You're seeing a lot of excitement on the sidelines here. Their guys are turned up. They're fired up. They're ready to get back on the field and try and make something happen. This is where defensively you need a stop. You have to dig deep. You have to be able to get in there and stop the momentum, stop the bleeding. Do not allow Kentucky State to score again here. Thoroughbreds have a chance to take command of this game early on. These two teams have not played since 2019. So not a lot of recent history between these two squads. But Kentucky State w did win that game. They lead the overall series 11-3. to The give. Alexander, a good chunk on first down. Nine yards out to the 46 and again in Panther territory. You're starting to see them wear down that defensive line a little bit. You know, their ability to both throw and pass, it, it, you never know what's coming at you. You never know what they're going to do next. They're mixing up. They're doing a good job of having a balanced attack. Certainly seems like the offense has found a rhythm. Here's a toss. Alexander strings it out to the 45-yard line. Probably has enough for a first down. Will depend on the spot. It's going to be close. Looks like he is... Less than a half a yard shy, so barely third down and inches coming up for Kentucky State. Need about a foot for a first down. Though Kentucky State has lined up quickly just about every down so far. They haven't gone quick in a while. Taking their time on this third down and short. Keeper. And Perez has plenty for a first down. Shouldered out by Andrew Bloodsaw at the end of the play. Good job with the misdirection, bringing the receiver into motion. Loud, open up the space for him to get out to the outside and make a play with his legs. Great job, Perez. The well traveled quarterback from East St. Louis, Illinois. That has been a pipeline for this Kentucky State program. And Felton Huggins had. Nothing to say, uh, nothing short of great things to say for that program coming in. East St. Louis has been a pipeline for a lot of programs around the country. No I'll tell question. you that. Handful on first down for Alexander. Uh, check that. Make that uh, Lavelle Hill. They got the carry on that first down play. They've rotated Hill. Alexander has gotten some carries. Fishback as well. So plenty of faces in the backfield. Fishback is next to Perez for this second and seven. Utilizing the running game more on this drive. Yeah, and I think that that's brilliant. You know, when you're in a situation where 
yes, your pass game's working, but also you want to start to prepare for not just today, not just this game, but your entire season. You want everybody involved. You, you're, you've got a little bit of a lead. You have an opportunity to really be diverse in your attack. Perez has pressure coming, and that pass knocked down. Corner blitz, Cameron Ivy off the edge. I like that blitz dialed up there from the Clark Atlanta defense. It's a great opportunity to kind of throw something different at them, get them out of rhythm. Now you give them a third and long situation. This is going to be a huge play for Clark Atlanta. And once again, Kentucky State's in this uh, middle territory where it could be decision time if they don't pick up this third down and seven. Five wide, empty backfield. Big pressure, Perez goes down. Beautiful play there. Send everybody, look like Xavier Hopkins, I could be wrong, but it looked like Xavier Hopkins in on that blitz in the sack. Hopkins got him first, the junior from Harvest, Alabama. And just like that, you flip the tides and you force a punt. Yeah, it looked like you know everybody was in the backfield there. Maybe they were going for a screen opportunity, but they just weren't able to get it off. Quick kick situation. Oh, play blown dead once again for a false start. I like the intensity that the Clark defense and special teams units are playing with. They're getting to the ball. They're trying to make something happen. They are far from giving up. That's what I needed to see from this defense on that last possession. Like I said, they're still very much in this ball game. There's a lot of football left to be played. Yeah, it definitely feels like a critical sack and. Again, even if you, you force an incompletion or a no-gainer on that play, maybe Kentucky State decides to go for it. But then you get the sack, you force the punt, you get the football back. Birdsong gets it off. End over end, inside the 10, and returnable. A little shimmy shake from Seth Brooks, and he's out near the 20. And that's where Clark Atlanta takes over. And in that situation, that's the job of the returner. Make one guy miss, get north and south, broken ankles there. You don't have to get a, a touchdown return, but just get positive yardage. Great job. Makai Hubbard, who's a linebacker on defense, playing special teams for Kentucky State. And he got the stop on that play. First and 10 from the 18 for Clark Atlanta. Still searching for their first points of the game. And earlier I mistaked Heath Williams for Andrew Banks. That's Heath Williams back there at quarterback. So Williams family, don't be mad at me. That's my error. I apologize. That's caught over the middle, and it's enough for a first down. And slow getting up at the end of that play. Yeah, I saw Lonzi Tramble. I saw that as it happened. Uh, that, that's tough. You saw the knee give out there. Here we're going to get another look at it. Helmet right on the knee. That's tough. You never want to see that. It's his first catch of the game. And he is going to need some attention. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back with you. Don't go anywhere. Second quarter here in Kentucky. Kentucky State is on top 14 to nothing. And this game being coached 
by a couple of different guys. One legend on the Clark Atlanta side and then a brand new head coach in Felton Higgins, but both certainly have much great things to say about their programs and long football backgrounds for both as well. Absolutely. Coach Slater, you, you mentioned it. He's a legend. He's done a lot of amazing things, not only in football, but in this conference. He knows this conference like the back of his hand. He has seven championships here. And Coach Higgins, he's, he's the new guy on campus, but guess what? He has a lot of experience. He's played football at a very high level in the NFL. He's coached at a high level. He's been a part of some major programs. So you have two brilliant minds out here running both of these programs, which is great for the conference. You're seeing the conference start to elevate quite a bit with coaching talent. Um, and, and it was very interesting to hear from them. Both of them, you know, Coach Slater kept, th kept things close to the chest. He didn't want to give us too much. Coach Higgins, he was a little bit more open about what his philosophy looked like, but both of them, you could tell they're, they're very bright men. There's Willie Slater right there. Walking off as he was checking on Lonzi Tramble, who made his first catch of the game and is being carried off to the sideline. And really tough to see in week one, especially on the first catch of the year. I mean, that is uh, tough to see for a guy and any athlete on these fields that compete at a very high level. You train for the entire offseason, spring ball, and everything leads up to the first game. And then things go south after your first grab. Thoughts and prayers with that young man. No question. It did pick up a first down for Clark Atlanta. So it is first and 10 from the 29th. That was a gain of 11. Toss around the end to West. And he speeds forward for five. Upended after a first down gain of about five yards. A lot of speed on the outside there from Clark. Ability to get downhill. I like seeing them get their guys in space. I want to see this continue. I really think that that's the way you attack. This, this offense that has been, or this defense has been extremely aggressive from Kentucky State getting into the backfield. Give them a little bit of misdirection. Get the ball out into to space with playmakers. Second and four for the Panthers. We have not seen him throw the football much yet tonight. Williams looks to throw here. Out route. And enough for a first down. Jalen Hood on his way out of bounds. He's been a top target so far and also an impact guy on special teams. That was a beautiful ball there. You know, these are the type of drives you want to get going. You want to have some success. You want to have multiple first downs. You know, we, we noticed a struggle for first downs for quite a bit in the first quarter. Now we're seeing them start to string some together. This is an opportunity for Clark to really give themselves something positive to talk about here at halftime. Getting some points on the board here in this possession would be huge. Another short pass in traffic, and it's hauled in by Davion Newson. Gain of four. And it looks like you know, Clark's stolen a little bit of the playbook from Kentucky State, airing it out, spreading it out a little bit. They're moving fast. This is an exciting game. You know, when you talk week one football, you know, usually, like you said before, you're seeing a lot of mistakes. You're seeing a lot of mental errors. We're not seeing that here. Both of these teams are extremely well coached. Yeah. They came ready to play, and they're giving us everything that we asked for. One-on-one -on -one coverage near side of your screen. It's a handoff. Big hole. Gibbs into Kentucky State territory and bumped down near the 40. Great run there. Here we get an opportunity to see him get north and south get downhill, make him, again, making somebody miss. It's key, making somebody miss. You know, that's one of the things that I've seen from the running backs at Clark is they don't let that first guy touch him. They don't let that first guy take him down. 17 yards on the pickup for Jeremiah Gibbs, who has not gotten many touches in this first half, but that has been involved in quite a few plays. And the Panthers driving as far as they have so far here tonight. Williams uncorks it. And a penalty marker comes out. I was waiting on that flag to come. There was no way he could not throw it in that situation. Brandon Wade, the guilty party for Kentucky State. And you're right, there was not a whole lot of question about it. Completely wrapped up from the backside. Yeah, here we're going we're to see another beautiful ball. I mean, 
this has been a phenomenal job from Williams. He's thrown some great balls. Even the ones that haven't connected have looked great. He put his receiver in a position where either he was going to come down with the ball or nobody was. And in that situation, that penalty puts him into striking territory. Ronnie West, an experienced receiver, too, selling that a little more, but didn't need to sell it because it was as clear as it gets. So the Panthers close to the red zone for the first time tonight. They're at the 25 with a first and 10, trailing by 14, and over halfway through this second quarter. Gibbs cuts it back, and a gain of about five on first down, and some room starting to grow in the running game for Clark Atlanta. Yeah, we're starting to see a little bit more confidence. We're starting to see, you know, like I said before, starting to string together positive plays. When you're able to do that, now your offensive line, they're able to breathe a little bit easier. Your quarterback's starting to feel excited and get that confidence going. Playmakers are making plays. This is going to be a pivotal moment here. What can Clark do with this opportunity right outside of the red zone? You feel like the beautiful balls, even though they've been incomplete by Williams a couple times, have impacted that? Yeah, I think it gives you that confidence. I think you know, hey, I can make that play. I can make that throw. Even if it doesn't get where you're, where you're trying to get it to, just being able to know that I can make that throw. Give me the time. Receivers get where they need to be. He's had some, some completions on this drive. I, I think that confidence has to be growing with him right now. Third down and five here for Clark Atlanta. Feel like you're down two scores, getting close to the end of the second quarter. You want some... Real positivity going into the halftime locker room. And perhaps a decision if the Panthers can't pick this up. Williams to the outside, and they will pick it up, but the ball comes out at the end of the play. Oh, my goodness. Now, there's going to be a discussion here as to whether Kentucky State had reestablished to recover this football inbounds. Devion Newson dropped it at the end. I believe it will be a catch and fumble, but the question is, did Kentucky State have a defender that reemerged emerged inbounds without touching any of that white to pick up this football? Ooh, That's the real question here. Absolutely not. And I, I think, based on what we just saw there, I don't know that the Thoroughbreds had anybody in bounds, but it looks like they're going to get the football. Wow, they will get the ball. Now that has to be slightly demoralizing. They did whatever they wanted to do, move the football the entire length of the field. We're in scoring position. Everything was clicking in, in the fumble. I mean, we talked about it at the onset of this game. You have to eliminate turnovers, those mental mistakes, and big plays. Right now, Clark's giving up the ball twice. They've, they've fumbled, turned the ball over twice. In plus territory. And 14 0 is our score. Yeah. Definitely gives an opportunity here, too, to Kentucky State to once again start to take command of this game. Already leading by 14. And not much there for Alexander on first down. Great job by the defense. You know, I love to see the fight. You know, we talked about. How do you overcome adversity? How do you handle it? What are you doing? You know, you get hit in the mouth by the opponent, and right now Clark's defense, they're playing a heck of a ball game. Don't let this score fool you. They are buzzing. They are swarming. They are playing hard. Definitely appears to be an improved defense over last year, too. Second and long for Kentucky State. Clock inside, five minutes left in his first half. A score in each quarter for the Thoroughbreds. If you're just joining us. Looks like Felton Huggins is going to use a timeout. Yeah, and it was one of the things I want to talk about during the broadcast that I, I loved. We asked them about where they were ranked in the preseason polls. And Coach Huggins gave us that politically correct answer. You know, rankings don't win ball games. But Chambers on the defensive side, <laughs> he let us know that, hey, you know what, that stung a little bit. 
And I think this game right here, they're putting the rest of the conference on notice that they are here. Yeah. And they're and they're they're for real. Yeah, no question. And yeah, you're right. He did not uh, mince any words when he said we were pretty upset, especially at the defensive unit for being picked to finish 12th in this league. And, and granted, it will be a competitive league. 13 teams in this conference. Benedict's picked to repeat as champions of the SIAC. It's a modified eight-game conference slate this year, and so things look a little bit different, but expected to be some of the same old teams at the top of this conference. Absolutely. Absolutely. There's great football in this conference. I think that that's something that it needs to be noted is these teams are strong. These coaches are strong. The talent is there. This is going to be an exciting conference this year to watch. Coach took his time to get his team in a position to make plays here. I think if I'm in that huddle, the conversation, what we probably would have heard is do not give up the football. Ball security, ball security, ball security. Second and long for Kentucky State. And that toss is behind the intended man. Incomplete. Third down and long coming up. That was a beautiful play call, though. I know you know, nobody wants to hear that when it's an incomplete pass, but, you know, seeing Sam Mono come across the, the middle there, you know, the transfer from New Mexico State, if he's led with that ball, we might be looking at another score. And yeah, there wasn't a whole lot back for Clark Atlanta, but now they've forced Kentucky State into a third and long. All right, so what do they dial up here? We saw them last time bring a huge blitz on third down. I think, we're, I think we're seeing more of the same. They only bring four. It's a run. And it's going nowhere. Good job defensively to string out the play. Assignment football. Now you're in a position to get this punt return and be, again, positive yards. There's still plenty of time. Or, or positive position on the field. There's still plenty of time left in this half. There's still an opportunity for Clark to put some points on the board before halftime. Me being a special teams guy, this is where I'd like to see somebody get sent here after the punt. Returner on the backside, fair catch. I'm going to send somebody, try and get a block. Almost didn't get that play off, and the punt gets blocked. It's picked up and returned nearly to the end zone. Down at the one-yard line. Clark Atlanta will take over right on the teeth of scoring a touchdown. I guess you could say I know a thing about special teams, huh? Beautiful block. Way to spread out, full extension. That, that's exactly what you want to see in that situation. Almost took that in for a touchdown. And it looked like Evan Wynn who ended up coming away with it and returning it down to the one-yard line. But there were several guys back there as they broke through quite a bit. So first in goal and a dream scenario here for the Panthers knocking on the door of their first score. Yeah, it looks like they're going to bring in the heavy package. They're going to run it straight up the gut. Ball security here. Try and put some points on the board. This is as big as Clark Atlanta has been up front tonight. Williams gives it off. Kinsey in for six. And right, right there, just like that, Clark Atlanta is right back into this football game. The bell cow last year is into pay dirt for the first time, and Clark Atlanta has made this a one-score game. The special teams the difference. So it's really been a story of a couple turnovers in this game and a big special teams play have led to the offense for both sides. Quintanilla on for the PAT. Take that back. That was actually Fernando Lobo who did not kick 
for Clark Atlanta last year mainly. He did kick a few times. He booted that extra point through. And so now it's a 14-7 game. 3.15 to go in his second quarter. And now this game has a totally and totally different feel. Absolutely. And you know, when you're on the road, you want to take advantage of opportunities like that. I love the guts of the special teams coordinator to, to make that call. Send everybody. You're in positive position. You know that no matter what happens, you're going to be in a position where your returner can fair catch and put you in a, in a great offensive position. So great job there from Clark Atlanta defensively, special teams-wise, and then offensively to finish the job. 14-7, to just over three minutes remain here in the first half. Now the defense has to step up again, but you're seeing a little bit more bounce in their step. You're seeing a little bit more you know, confidence and, and head nods. I think it's going to be a different ball game here as we come into the second half. End over end kick. Big space, Jonathan Adams out across the 40. And he makes something happen on special teams for Kentucky State. Good field position again. Yeah, special teams can be a huge difference maker in a game. Um, you have to kick and cover. They didn't get down there quick enough. Great job finding his lanes. Great job by the kick return team making sure not to have any block in the backs. You see a couple times where guys showed restraint, they held up, great job. Now let's see if Kentucky State can finish out this half with some points on the board. You got 3.07 to do it. Kentucky State up 14-7. 58 yards stand between the thoroughbreds and another score. Toss. Oh, what a tackle from behind. Outstanding defensive play by Logan Daniels wrapping up the ankles of DeMarco Fishback. Both of these defenses have been impressive. Here we're going to get a look at, you know, you have a man out in space being able to track him down, get your hands on him, you make sure he's coming down. Great job. Daniel Jr. from Georgia, obviously a recruiting hotbed for Clark Atlanta. Being based in the city, and they recruit the city pretty well. And the state overall, it's second and ten here for Kentucky State. 2.20 to go in the half. Toss to the outside. Oh, my goodness. Still inbounds. Markel Cotton finally taken down at the 44. Mar Markel Cotton with those video game moves there, making his man miss. Well... Coach Huggins talked a lot about Markel Cotton, and you see the play here. Came over with Huggins from McNeese. He didn't play much there, but he entered the portal, and you can see the playmaking ability on the edge when Cotton gets space, making guys miss. Plenty of time. We're in that two-minute hurry-up offense. Perez. Fluttering ball, caught! Jaden Hale came back to the football and made the catch inside the 30. Way to adjust. You know, Perez was hit as he threw, so he wasn't able to plant that foot and follow through. Hale came back and got it. This is obviously an offense that has no problem going quick. Back to the line of scrimmage in a hurry. Perez, a shoulder shake. Going deep. It's caught inside the five. Yeah, he had two guys open there. He could pick his poison. Jonathan Howard. There's clearly a, a breakdown on the backside of the secondary there. Here we're going to get another look at it. Beautiful ball. Great play drawn up. First and goal ball on the two with just under a minute remaining. Yeah, had two open receivers there, too. Hale was open near the pylon. So now, no reason to be in a hurry for Kentucky State, trying to bleed off the final 40 seconds of this first half clock and end it with six. Whistles before the snap. 
And a timeout called by Kentucky State. Can't take it to the halftime with you. Inside 30 seconds, too. We'll stay here. The Thoroughbreds, again, a kind of a chance to, to rebuild after a special team's blunder. And, and I wouldn't even necessarily call it a blunder, more uh, a play made by Clark Atlanta on special teams, trying to overcome that with about a three-minute drive here, and it's been very successful so far. Absolutely. You know, again, responding to adversity, and we haven't seen much adversity that Kentucky State has had to face. I wouldn't even call that really adversity, but something didn't go your way. Right. Clark's back in the game. How do we respond? And going down and scoring right here is the type of response that sends that confidence to your coach, to your team, to your fans. We can handle whatever's thrown our way. So this is going to be a, a, a moment for both of these teams. Kentucky State needs to score here. Clark Atlanta, can their defense stand tall here? 20 seconds on the clock. We only need two stops, really. Think there's any challenges to running a spread offense down near the goal line? Yes. You want to ask Marshawn Lynch that question? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think there's some challenges, but there's also if it's if it's executed properly, there's going to be guys open. The give to Hill. And Hill is stopped at the one. And now time is of the essence down inside 20 seconds, and Kentucky State's got to hurry. Yeah, Perez, Perez has some size to him. I, I'm, I'm surprised he's not going under center and just going to drive it in. Hill, up the middle. Touchdown. Timed perfectly with three ticks left in the first half. And Kentucky State leads by two scores again. A big time play. You know, uh, timing is everything. They used every second of the clock. Great time management offensively. They left no time for Clark to do anything. I, I mean, textbook. You can't draw it up any better than that drive right there to end out the first half. And so it's 21-7. to And this is a Kentucky State squad that once again has taken some command of this game. Again, if you turn the clock back to the first couple of drives, it was the defenses that were winning out. I think overall there's still an argument to be made that the defenses have been the show in this first half, but that was a pretty offensive drive by Kentucky State. Yeah, Kentucky State has gotten it going more on offense than Clark. They have a lot more consistency right now. They're making plays. They're, they're just putting together strings of drives. You know, sometimes when you get an opportunity to get on the field, the drive stalls out and your offense comes back to the sidelines and they don't have that, that confidence. Kentucky State right now feels like, I don't care what play you call, Coach, we can execute and we can make it a positive play. Let's see what happens here. Kickoff-wise, are they going to squib it? Are they going to try and you know, get the time to run out without Clark getting an opportunity to run another play, or are they going to kick it deep and have one Hail Mary opportunity? We'll see what they do. Yeah, we've seen both so far from Malik. There's the squib. Jalen Hood putting a tough spot inside the five, and he just needs to get down. And he gets crushed to end the first half. What a hit laid. Great job covering there by the special teams unit. You know, both of these special teams have done a great job. The home crowd is loving it. The first half ends with Kentucky State on top 21-7 here in Frankfurt. And the Thoroughbreds in control by two scores heading into the halftime break. We'll step aside. We'll come back in a moment and recap what happened in the first half. Preview half number two. Exciting start. Week one of the college football season on HBCU+. Plus.
Technology lets you monitor your pet when you're not at home. But to monitor threats to your hybrid workforce wherever they are, you need more than technology. You need CDW, who gets to know your business and can design and deploy custom solutions with pre-configured HP notebooks with HP Wolf Security. AI-enabled threat detection and remote management protect your endpoints 24-7, giving your defenses some real teeth. Bummer. HP makes always-on remote security possible. CDW makes it powerful. I'm a millionaire. I'm not a millionaire. I'm a millionaire. I'm not a millionaire. Crypto is complicated, but as a tax expert with crypto experience, you can hand your taxes off to me. You do your thing. We've got your taxes. Into it. TurboTax Live. Hey, Lucky, feeling pretty good today. Let's air this one out, buddy. No, nah, Lucky, this ain't no cross. This is my house. Lad, you saw that last ball, all right? My arm's feeling pretty good. I don't know if we can make it to North Murray. Just meet me at Aikens. Aikens Ford? Yeah, dude, it's closer than you think. Let's go. All right, let's do it. All right. Woo! You're right. Aikens is bigger and closer than you think. Go dogs. Halftime here in Kentucky, season opener. Kentucky State leading Clark Atlanta 21-7 with JB, Justin Brantley, I'm Derek Decker. And it was an exciting first half. We expected entertaining football tonight, and that's what we've gotten so far. Absolutely. You know, one of the things that we didn't get that we expected was miscues. Both of these teams have been fundamentally sound. You can tell they're well coached. Right now, Kentucky State has the edge just because they've done a little bit more offensively. But all around, it's been a great football game so far. Christian Perez here at quarterback debuting for Kentucky State. He's looked pretty comfortable in the first half, but they balanced it well with the run game. Absolutely. You know, they came out early and were super pass heavy. They, they realized that, hey, we want to get him some confidence. They started to get some, some mix of run pass. Run game started to dominate a little bit for them. And now we see just an overall offensive threat all across the board there for them. And then for Clark Atlanta, that score coming after a special teams play to wrap up this first half. They made that play and got into the end zone. That brings us to halftime and Kentucky State on top 21 to 7 here on HBCU Plus. <laughs> Calling all gamers. Did you know that you can turn your love for playing video games into a six-figure career opportunity? Esports is now a massive $3 billion industry with positions available in front and behind the scenes. Game development, broadcasting, event management, programming, even social media management all play important roles in gaming. Stop letting others tell you it's a waste of time and turn your passion into real success. With individual courses for just $99, you will get a comprehensive blend of online tech-based coursework and in just eight weeks' time, we'll earn your eSports business certificate for less than half the cost of a college semester. Register now at metro-squad.com and take control of your future today. Social media doesn't really feel very social these days. Sure, we get to see our friends, but it's so much better to be with them. And even though we're more connected, we miss being together. Tap into what's happening right now and meet up with friends, old and new. With the only social network that's designed to get you offline and back into life. Swoop in. Let's hang. When you don't feel like working and you still got to go to work, that's the grind. And that's what you have to do sometimes. When you choose to put in the work and embrace the journey, success has no choice but to find you.
Boss, come here. I want to see you tomorrow at 4 p.m. with the varsity. Yes, sir. Congratulations, you made it. Thank you, Coach. All right. Here in Frankfurt, halftime 21 7. It is Kentucky State on top of Clark Atlanta here in this week one opener. Derek Decker, Justin Brantley here on site, and here's a look at some of the halftime stats. Yeah, I mean, here we're looking at, now it looks like the graphics flipped a little bit. The yards, 191 yards for Kentucky State yeah. versus 63 to Clark Atlanta. It's been an offensive you know, approach there, offensive dominance. Great game so far from them. Defensively, they've been all over the place. They've created and forced some turnovers, which we talked about up on the onset. Don't give up big plays. Don't turn the ball over. Clark took advantage of the one opportunity they had there on the yeah. goal line, punched one in. We're looking at an opportunity for both these teams to come out and kind of set the tone. Clark's going to get the ball coming out of half. So if they're able to go down and score early, we're right back here in this ball game. Yeah, of course, they made it close Heading into the halftime locker room, they were down 14 to nothing. And without that special teams play, certainly wonder where this game is at right now. Perhaps Kentucky State has a bigger lead, but instead they went on that big three-minute drive toward the end of the half. That was Chad Alexander scoring there. Alexander had a touchdown in the first half. So did DeMarco Fishback. And then LaVale Hill also scoring in that first half for Kentucky State. Still an exciting first half and uh, again plenty of things to go on into the second half. We looked at the keys to the game to start this. How do you feel like those are playing out so far? You know I think 
neither team's really controlled the line of scrimmage on either side. Both teams have done a great job gaining penetration, getting in the backfield, making plays happen. The one thing that I will say is we talked a lot about Kentucky State's offense and them going from that triple option running attack to a spread offense. And that spread offense has shown us to be very dynamic. They have the ability to throw the ball, but they also can run out of it. They've done a great job doing that. We talked about not turning the ball over. Clark Atlanta has two turnovers, and they're down by two touchdowns. So those keys that we talked about are definitely coming into fruition here in this game. Yeah, Willie Slater said to us earlier this week that the, the team that has more turnovers, or the team that has fewer turnovers and gives up fewer big plays wins 100% of the time. So there's another look at the halftime stats with Kentucky State racking up almost 200 yards of offense. But again, that just still kind of shows you how good the defense was on both sides, really. And I think the 21 points don't really do Clark Atlanta's defense justice in that first half. They absolutely do not. You know, I think that Clark Atlanta's defense had a great first half. It's hard when you're put in positions where, you know, short fields, and even in those situations, they came up and made some stops. Again, that the, the scoreboard does not show the strength of both of these defenses. No question. It's 21-7 Kentucky State here at halftime. Call a credit repair company to fix my credit. Hold the phone, man. You can do it yourself with Credit Versio. That's way too hard. Call the credit repair company. Most credit repair companies only work on one or two accounts at a time, making it slow and expensive. You won't figure that out for months. <laughs> Ignore him. Credit Versio's brilliant software scans all three credit bureaus, finds the accounts that are hurting your score, and guides you through the entire process. Anyone can do it. Let's fast forward and see the results. <laughs> wow, I fixed my own credit and saved hundreds. You can do this. Visit creditversio.com. This all new Aria is an elegant EV. Yeah, with 389 horsepower. And all wheel drive. Ooh. It's beautiful. It's a beast. It's electric. With an edge. Oh, let's go with that. This is how it starts with the 2023 McDonald's Change Leaders. Ten young black visionaries who've started something legendary. They're challenging what you think you know. They're speaking up, showing up, and loving up on our communities. Because they know when you start something, you can change everything. Meet the 2023 McDonald's Change Leaders. Find out what they're up to at mcdchangeleaders.com.
All kinds of fun at halftime here at Alumni Stadium in Frankfort, Kentucky. It's Kentucky State and Clark Atlanta here in week one. First of all, JB, so glad the football is back and you can feel the atmosphere. Weather's great. Crowd is great here tonight, too. And it's just be uh, just great to be back in the booth. Yeah, you know, nothing rivals that HBCU experience. You know, seeing the fans, seeing the crowd, the students, they're having an amazing time. This is just beautiful. It's great to be back in this setting. It's great to be back on the field. Football season is here. Yeah, students are definitely having a great time here at halftime, and they have turned out quite a bit on this Thursday night. Special to have a showcase on a Thursday night game, and it feels like it always gives the atmosphere that much more juice when you're playing under the lights. Oh, absolutely. You know, Thursday night lights, Friday night lights, doesn't matter. The lights are on. We've got football going. You can smell it. You know, it's just a, a beautiful atmosphere. The crowd is here. They're, they're locked in. The band is playing. I mean, just phenomenal game so far. Everything about this setting has been amazing. All right, so Clark Atlanta, what do you want to see from them in the second half? Trailing 21-7, to but very much still in this ballgame. Yeah, you know, plenty of time. You know, a whole half of football left to be played. They're down by two scores, which you know, may seem like a lot, but it's far from insurmountable. I'd like to see them get some positive momentum going in this opening drive. Again, you don't have to score, but I'm sitting here watching their kicker warm up here for the second half, and he, he has a leg on him. He has a lot of range. You know, get into field goal position, get some points on the board, just some positive movement to really start to set the tone for what the second half is going to look like. That's what I'm looking to see from them. On the Kentucky State side, I'm looking for them not to get complacent, right? You have the lead, but they're still, job's not done. So I want to see them come out and, and hey, we're up a little bit. Now we want to just dominate. We, we want to make you quit. So that's what I look to see. When a team's up, I want to see them go up even bigger. All four touchdowns in that first half scored on the ground. Three for Kentucky State and one for Clark Atlanta. KSU dominating in in terms of total yards in that first half, almost 200 to their credit. Clark Atlanta taking advantage of a big play outside of the offense to score into the end zone for the first time. And we'll see what the Panthers can do with the football to start this third quarter. Do remember that earlier, Clark Atlanta did have a big kickoff return out to near midfield. We've seen Jalen Hood have the potential to make some plays so far here tonight. Yeah, you know, Malik with his kickoffs has done a good job mixing it up. I want to see him, the, the kick returns up a little bit. He's expecting a squib, it appears. I want to see him try and put it over his head. I want to see him try and push it into the end zone, try and give his team the ability to get down and cover. You don't want to give up a big return here. Special teams has been a very bright spark, spot so far for Clark Galena. Off we go in this third quarter. Hood picks it up, reverses field, 25-yard line, and track down at the 30 from behind. And that is Trey Blackman Jr. that brings him down on the backside. Return of about 20 yards, and the Panthers set up shop on the 30 for their first drive of the third quarter. Yeah, here you see stretching the field, getting upfield. Again, the squib allows for some misalignment sometimes in coverage. Kentucky State did a good job finding their lanes and getting down and not allowing that to turn into a, another big return. So here are the Panthers. And we see 
The starting quarterback, Keith Williams Jr., grad transfer from Tennessee State, on the field once again to start this third frame. High snap on first down. There's the give to Gibbs. Gibbs taken down by his shoulder pad after a gain of three in the middle of the field. Well, it's a great job there. You know, Williams was able to corral the snap and get the playoff. You know, it, it looked bad to start with the high snap, but he was able to bring it down, get it to the back, and positive yardage. Jeremiah Gibbs ran for almost 200 yards last year. The junior from Alabama starts behind Daquan Kinsey, who we've also seen a lot in the first half. Kinsey's in the backfield right now, standing next to Williams. Four receivers on second and seven. There's the toss. Hood comes back to it, makes the grab, and angles his way out of bounds with a penalty marker at the end of the play. Brandon Wade was over there to shove him out, and he's going to get tagged for a penalty, and this will add some extra yards at the end of the play for the Panthers. Let's try and see if we can see what happened here. Face mask. Yep, looks like a face mask. It is a face mask, so add 15 to the end of that play. And all of a sudden, the Panthers are marching here in plus territory already. And this first drive is going to plan. They're moving the football well. Yeah, great field position here. Back-to-back -back positive plays. It's going to put them in the offensive end of the field. Now let's see if they can capitalize. Williams to toss. He finds his man. It's Newsom on his way out of bounds for another first down. And all, the space is really opened up in the passing game to start this third quarter for Clark Atlanta. Yeah, Wilson, he's done a great job finding his receivers, putting the ball right on the money. I really like him. I like his delivery. I like everything that he brings to the table as a quarterback. He's got a lot of poise. Look at Williams right now. He's surveying the field. He's trying to read the defense. Big play here. Wasn't ready for the snap, but he takes it anyway. So this is kind of a broken play, and he's upended in the backfield for a loss of one. That play was doomed from the get-go, and fortunate that the Panthers still have the football. Yeah, in settings like that, sometimes you'll see the snap catch the quarterback off guard and turn into a fumble. Jeremiah Owens there to make the stop for the thoroughbred defense. So second and long for the Panthers. Late substitution for Kentucky State. It's Kinsey with some space. Steps out of a tackle. Kinsey still on his feet. Gets the block. Kinsey. Touchdown. Kinsey's done a phenomenal job not letting the first guy bring him down, but more importantly, not letting one guy bring him down. You're going to have to send multiple. Great play there. Great ability here. We're going to get a look at it. 30-yard run. Downhill, make the man miss. Get into the secondary. You're not tackling him in his ankles. He got out of three tackles on that 30-yard dash. And just like that, it's a one-possession ball game. Couldn't have been better on that first third quarter drive for Clark Atlanta. Well, whatever coach said to them at halftime, it worked. Extra point is through, and it's 21 to 14. Two and a half minute drive as they go 70 yards for a touchdown. I don't think you can ask much more of your team. When you talk about how do you respond going into halftime, they scored right at the end of the half. You're down 21-7. to How are you going to respond? That's a definitive drive right there. You know, that's letting me know we have a long night of football. You know, the, both these teams are playing hard. They're not willing to give up. Nobody's backing down. This is a conference matchup. And yeah. in conference matchups, you know, you want to start off 1-0. and you, you want to set the tone in that leading direction of being, you know, especially with how both these teams were projected in the conference. They both want to come out of here with a win. No question, both teams finished below 500 last year, but both teams also had a couple of close losses that very easily could have swung the other direction. 
Kentucky State finishing four and six. Clark, and, uh, Clark Atlanta finished three and seven. And again, plenty of positive building blocks off of last season for both of these squads. And Coach Slater talked a little bit about that three and seven. You know, there was a lot of movement coaching staff wise. You know, yeah. they, they didn't have their whole unit together um, until right before fall camp. And that's difficult to make something happen in that position sometimes. Fishback on the return at the 30. Fishback still alive and dashes out of bounds at the 42. Big returns for both sides on kickoffs tonight. Yeah, you know, that's talent, right? You have a lot of talent. They're getting out in space. But the thing that I'm seeing, if you take a look at here, you'll see blocking assignments. Guys are doing their job. You know, hat on a hat. I'm going to give you a lane. Returner, you've got to make somebody miss. You know, just great fundamental football and then athletes doing what they do in space. So Kentucky State starts on their own 41. We'll see if they can have the same success that Clark Atlanta had on their first offensive drive of this second half. Now leading by just seven. Although Kentucky State has never trailed in this game, they're not going to get this playoff. Play clock's at zero, but... I think there may have been some miscommunication on when the timer was uh, actually supposed to start on that play. So they let the play happen, even though the play clock was at zero. It's an incompletion anyway, and it's second and ten. Yeah, it looked like the ref held them up a little bit and didn't allow them to snap the ball, so it would have been tough to throw a flag on that, on that possession there. Kentucky State at the line of scrimmage in a hurry. It's an important series for this Clark Atlanta defense. On second and ten, Perez. It's brought in by Kiki McFadden, who is another guy that has had a long journey around college football. Spent his first three years at Kent State, and then his last two at Eastern Kentucky. Grad student originally from Florida, now with the Thoroughbreds for his final year, and it's third down and five after a second down pickup of five. Yeah, what that tells me is Coach Higgins does a phenomenal job recruiting. He's finding those guys that are out there um, and giving them an opportunity. We talked a little bit about that. This is not a second-chance institution, but this is somewhere where he loves finding those guys that need another opportunity. They need another you know, ch shot at college football. He doesn't you know, look at it as, oh, these guys fell to us. He looks at it as we're able to help them and provide them with what they need for the rest of their journey. Christian Perez makes a play with his feet there to move the chains. And they're lining up quick, but as you stated, they're not, they're not playing as quick as they started off. They're using a lot of the play clock. They're taking their time, making sure they have the proper alignment. They're, they're really throwing off this defense because the defense isn't, a lot, isn't able to sub out because of how quickly they're aligning. Screen pass. Jaden Hale. Stood up at the 42. Shoved out of bounds by Cameron Ivey. I really like these screen passes. I like getting your, your talent, the ball in space. And even though it wasn't able to go for a big play, it's a positive four yards. It's a great play on first down. And, you know, that's a, a really good point you bring up because these teams... First couple of drives weren't getting those positive plays on first down, and it kind of killed their drives. Trips to the right of Perez. There's the flip to Hale. He's got a first down and more. Hale's electric. So interesting, JP. You know, they put him in this slot. He's 5'8", and he's a little bit undersized, but he can seriously make some plays. The quickness, the agility, and the cutting ability and athleticism of Hale has been on display from minute one here tonight. 
Yeah, you know, East St. Louis is full of playmakers, and he's making his hometown proud here this evening. First down for Kentucky State from the 33 on their first drive of the second half. Clark Atlanta scored on their opening drive of this third quarter. Play action. Perez deep into the end zone. And is it picked off? It is. Intercepted. That was a beautiful looking ball that hung up there a little bit too late. Looked like double coverage back there. Um, safety high. He was able to just act like a center fielder out there. Julian Little, the junior from Mobile, gets the pick in the end zone. And Clark Atlanta dials up the turnover that they need. Great first defensive series from Clark Atlanta. We talked about defense winning championships. Clark's defense, you know, if you look at the tail of the tape and you start looking at the yards they've given up, one might think, oh, my, oh man, Kentucky State's just had an awesome offensive game. No, they, Clark's been put in some bad positions, but their defense has stepped up multiple times and done a great job. Now let's see if the offense can capitalize and tie this ball game up. They had no trouble moving the football the first time they had it in this quarter. This time a keeper by Williams. He slides down and picks up a couple on first down. Have not seen that yet from Williams tonight. Yeah, Williams is trying to say, hey, I'm multidimensional. There, there's more than one thing I can do. I throw a pretty ball, but don't let me start to do it with my feet. And remember, when we talked earlier in the week, we talked about what you wanted to eliminate from a defensive perspective for Kansas State. And remember, that's one of the things, that, or Kentucky State, and remember, that's one of the things that they talked about. You know, Coach said, I do not want them to extend plays. I do not want to see their quarterbacks get out and make things happen with their feet. Williams over the middle, that's caught. Somehow, still on his feet, JV and Tony, because he came back on his own, does not have the first down anymore. Initially had first down yardage, but now marked a yard shy for third and one. And here we're gonna get another look at it. Just playing pitch and catch. Your man's open, get him the ball. Comes backwards, like you said, lost a little bit of that momentum. But still, big play here, third down. Ken Clark convert. Kinsey gets the call, and he is down in the backfield. Great play from behind by Kentucky State's Trey Blackman, Jr. Great job stepping up defensively, making something happen. Here we're going to get another look at it. Just penetration coming in, not allowing him to get away. Great job. Blackman's excited. He's happy. That defense stood up, got a stop here. Let's see. I mean, no matter what, there's going to be positive yardage here for Kentucky State. They're going to be in a good position to offensively try and make something happen. Well, after that interception, it does feel like a big play for Kentucky State to immediately get off the field. Now we've got whistles here, personnel movement all over the place. And Willie Slater burns his first time out of the second, the second half. We'll step out 21-14 Kentucky State and a punt upcoming for Clark Atlanta. I'm to call a credit repair company to fix my credit. Hold the phone, man. You can do it yourself with Credit Versio. That's way too hard. Call the credit repair company. Most credit repair companies only work on one or two accounts at a time, making it slow and expensive. You won't figure that out for months. <laughs> Ignore him. Credit Versio's brilliant software scans all three credit bureaus, finds the accounts that are hurting your score, and guides you through the entire process. Anyone can do it. Let's fast forward and see the results. <laughs> wow, I fixed my own credit and saved hundreds. You can do this. Visit creditversio.com. Kentucky State up seven, about to get the football back. This time a spiraling boot, back to the 35, and a fair catch. Thoroughbreds will start from their 35-yard line, and certainly dodging a bullet after turning it over in the end zone. Yeah, you know, this is going to be a very important possession 
not just for this game, but for the rest of the season. See how Christian Perez responds after throwing an interception. Does he come out and lead the team on a drive, you know, 65 yards to put some points on the board? Sometimes when you're a quarterback, having that opportunity to have that short memory, he didn't have to sit back and watch Clark drive down the field. He can get right back out there and kind of redeem himself. So this is going to be an interesting drive here to be able to see the mind behind Christian Perez a little bit. And though Perez has been at so many different places, not much time as a quarterback in game action. And so he's getting a chance to lead this thoroughbred squad. No gain on first down for Lavelle Hill. And it has to feel good, right? Almost like a redemption story. Spending so, many time, so much time being behind other players and finally getting to step out into your own and lead this team and be QB1. Feel like he's looked comfortable tonight? Oh, for sure. He looks, he looks like he's played a lot of football. You know, he's, sometimes in that quarterback position, being able to sit back and watch and learn, it can do you a great good of justice. Looks to toss here on second and 10. That's brought in Markel Cotton across midfield for a first down. Cotton said, I can either be the hammer or the nail. Today I'm going to choose hammer. Here we're going to watch him deliver the hit at the end of the play. Oh, it's a guy that loves the contact. Lowered his shoulder, bring it on. Quick snap, there's the fake. In space, it's caught for a first down. Big play for Jude Santana and his first catch of the night. And that's what I want to see Perez, uh, I want to see from Perez. I want to see him confidently step in and deliver a ball downfield. You know, on the heels of an interception, being able to deliver that throw there, great ball. 21 yards on the pitch and catch. Go and hurry up. Toss. Hill. Trucks one and gets down to the 21-yard line. My goodness, another hit initiated by the offense. You know, the physicality of this Kentucky State squad is just a beautiful thing to see. You can tell that they practice hard. You can tell they're bought in. Uh, you see receivers blocking downfield. You see the sideline. You know, everybody's on their feet. They're cheering each other on. I really like what I'm seeing from this squad. And now a fumble. And the Panthers have got it. Two possessions in a row end in turnovers close to the red zone for Kentucky State. Brutal. Here we're going to get another look at it. It doesn't look like he ever really had it. Let's see. Yep. The pitch didn't quite get to him. Timothy Jones got the recovery for the Panthers. And they have the football back. And that felt like a drive where the thoroughbreds were a couple plays away from punching it in. Oh, for sure. Still a seven-point game here deep in the third quarter. On first down, it's Kinsey. And he picks up about four. Kenzie's had a good game. He's been quiet, but he's made plays, positive yards, runs hard. Second and six, that's kind of where you want to be on second down. You know, getting anywhere above three yards on that first down play is always a good thing. and sets the tone for the rest of the drive. Third quarter flying by so far, already inside four minutes. Williams steps up. Gets back near the line of scrimmage, and then he's taken down after no gain. So third down coming up, there's, and the stop made by Bobby Hayes. There's that D-line that we talked about from Kentucky State. Bobby Hayes, Jimmy Edmonds up front, Jeremiah Owens, Bubba Johnson right over the football. I mean, it, that is a scary front four. You know, one thing that I'll say, you know, when you look at this and you look at what we're seeing out here, 
neither team has been able to really capitalize on the mistakes made by the other team. You know, both defensives have come out and stood strong, and we'll see if Kentucky State can keep that going. Williams keeps the play alive, and it's a good thing he did because Davion Newson brings it in for a first down at the 35-yard line. They needed six, they got eight. Great job extending the series. You want to see this from Clark Atlanta, you know, driving down. Like you said, this quarter's flying by. We're going to be in the fourth quarter before you know it. Uh, it seemed like the second quarter drug quite a bit, but this quarter has been flying. Part of it, the new rules in college football this year where the clock does not stop on first downs to the final two minutes of each half. That certainly picks up the pace a little bit, makes it closer to the NFL style in terms of rules. On first and ten, it's caught across the middle by Javian Tony and in to Kentucky State Territory. Another big hitter and a pickup of 16. Yeah, you know, it's been definitely a different second half from Williams under center. He's throwing the ball more. He's airing it out. He's confident. You can tell that he believes in his offense. He believes in these play calls. This is going to be an interesting fit, uh, second half of this drive. Jamie and Tony has been utilized a lot tonight. He was pretty much a non-factor last season, a junior from Columbus, Georgia, making plays. There's a fake. Williams keeps, and he's twirled down near the line of scrimmage. The stop made by Malik Adams, linebacker for him, Kentucky State from Marietta, Georgia. He's a big boy. He's listed at six foot two twenty, but he is playing bigger than that. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sitting, well built. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. <laughs> I'm sitting here looking, looking at this film, and you can tell they spend quite a bit of time in the weight room. Yeah, we noticed just walking in today that Kentucky State had the size advantage not a, not only up front but really across the board today. That pass is knocked down at the line of scrimmage, so third down and ten coming up for Clark Atlanta. But the physicality has certainly been. A difference tonight, and while the Panthers have been able to stay in it, Thoroughbred certainly putting that on display and certainly a marker for things to come later this season. And that was Jimmy Edmonds, the 6'5", 285-pound D lineman. I mean, just stuck his paw out there and knocked that one down. Third and long. 50-yard line. Williams unloads, and it's broken up at the last second. JV and Tony got twisted around at the end. Helmet comes off, and he is down, and he got kind of sandwiched between two different guys. Ouch. Ooh. Helmet on the knee. That look, looked like it hurt a little bit. Tough place to take it. The hit laid by Roman Hernandez. And we've already seen one fairly significant injury tonight for Clark Atlanta. And this is another skill guy that has had such a nice night in JV and Tony. We'll step aside late in the third quarter with Kentucky State up a touchdown. <laughs> I'm to call a credit repair company to fix my credit. Hold the phone, man. You can do it yourself with Credit Versio. That's way too hard. Call the credit repair company. Most credit repair companies only work on one or two accounts at a time, making it slow and expensive. You won't figure that out for months. <laughs> Ignore him. Credit Versio's brilliant software scans all three credit bureaus, finds the accounts that are hurting your score, and guides you through the entire process. Anyone can do it. Let's fast forward and see the results. <laughs> wow, I fixed my own credit and saved hundreds. You can do this. Visit creditversio.com. This is how it starts with the 2023 McDonald's Change Leaders. Ten young black visionaries who are starting something and changing everything. Find out what they're up to at mcdchangeleaders.com. I think adventure is going outside of your comfort zone, exploring new territory, and pushing your abilities in all aspects of life. You know, when there weren't a lot of surfers like me, I created my own way. Car designers can shape a piece of clay into a piece of art. 
So why don't they? At Nissan, things are different. They design cars that look like swords. Gladiators. The future. Or... Wow. Nissan knows what thrill looks like. Because they design it into every car they make. That's JV and Tony, and just so difficult to see coming off here tonight, JV. You know, week one, you mentioned it in the break. You trained for so long for these kind of moments, and Tony's had a really impactful night. Absolutely. And to see him go off is just really tough. Yeah, you never want to see it. I mean, it's a uh, reality of this game. Now we got laundry everywhere, and it'll be a false start against Clark Atlanta to back him up. Unfortunately, it's the second one of those we've seen in pretty much the, the same spot tonight, same kind of hit that earlier in the game knocked out another Panther. Yeah, you know, when the injury bug hits, sometimes it can, it can be deflating, especially if, when you have momentum going for you. Again, it's just another opportunity to see how these guys respond to the adversity. Fair catch at the 22. 32-yard boot. Still anybody's ball game. You know, it's still a, you, know, you don't want to go anywhere. You, you, you go to make a snack, warm up some popcorn, and <laughs> look back and say, what, did I, what happened? What did I miss? You do not want to leave your seat because this is still anybody's ball game. I'm loving the defensive stand that Clark Atlanta's taken. You know, they gave up seven, uh, 21 points in the first half. Here, they're shutting them down. You know, and let's see if they can continue to do that, continue to give their offense a chance to bring them back into the ball game. Yeah, they've given up some yards, but they've been able to get turnovers, which, again, was a thing that they kind of struggled to do last year was generate turnovers defensively and a unit that gave up 35 points a game almost a season ago. Perez gives to Hill. And Hill tumbles forward out to the 29. Eventually shut down by Cameron Ivey. Positive yards on first down. You know, anytime you can start off and get into a second and short situation, it's a great play. It gives you the opportunity to open up your playbook a little bit. They can go for a deep shot knowing that they're going to have third and three, which is a very convertible down. I love being in these short yard situations on second down. And they do not have to run another play before this fourth quarter starts. You see the fours going up on the sidelines. Clark Atlanta, the team that scored in the third. It's a one-score game with 15 minutes to go. Don't go anywhere. College football on HBCU+. Plus. As parents, we pay out the for school. So here's a novel idea. Just spend less on your kids. Amazon has great deals on everything kids need. Instead of spending more, he spent less. Why would a person spend more money? He's eight and he gets it. I'm 10. Hmm, that's less impressive. Spending less costs less, financially. I spend less on my grandkids. <laughs> and they don't even know it. So spend less on your kids with Amazon's back-to-school deals. It's fiscally advantageous. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. 
I'm a millionaire. I'm not a millionaire? I'm a millionaire? I'm not a millionaire. Crypto is complicated, but as a tax expert with crypto experience, you can hand your taxes off to me. You do your thing, we've got your taxes. Into it. TurboTax Live. Hey, it's Noah. Let me show you how I decked out my dorm for less with Amazon. I wear a lot of hats. This one's pretty self-explanatory. These are my colognes. Oh, the snap. I assume you guys are starving, so let's see what we got. A single plum, a lone Oreo, and some loose tortillas. So I went all out with my home theater system. Stadium seating. Popcorn bowl. And a big old blanket. Oh, <laughs> We never just see the numbers. We see the people. Detroit has just changed so much. You can see what it once was. And then I think about what it can be. As an entrepreneur, it's about how I can give them the tools to empower themselves. If we can just all do something small, all the small things will start to amount to something big. That's why we're here, to help make it happen. J.P. Morgan Chase. During the break, LaVale Hill hustled forward for a first down. Here's another look. Keep those feet churning, offensive line pushing. Yeah, got some help too. Carried him forward. And now a fresh set of downs for Kentucky State. You know, the, the interesting thing about this, JB, is you really don't know how many more possessions there are going to be in this game. It's getting late. And especially running the football, right? is a uh, it's it's so uh fascinating too because last year kentucky state ran the football pretty much all the time didn't throw up much in that triple option this year it's different they're trying to bleed this clock away and uh, put their stamp on this fourth quarter by running the ball in a spread offense yeah you know it's something to be said about being able to control the clock and run the football and effectively and efficiently do that when the other team knows that that's what you're doing and they just can't stop it. So it's, it's a great you know, testament to this team's power and their ability to do pretty much whatever they want to do offensively. If they need to throw it, they can throw it. If they want to run it, they can run it. Well, it's a three-yard run, but this play is coming back. This will be a penalty against Kentucky State. Pre-snap motion. One of the things we highlighted at halftime was the turnover margin. Clark Atlanta turned the ball over twice in the first half. Kentucky State turned it over zero. We have a completely different shift in that. There's yeah. been two turnovers here in the third quarter from Kentucky State. Illegal shift there by the Thoroughbreds. Backs up Kentucky State for a second and ten. But that's absolutely right. Turnover story is such a big deal in any game. And two aside here tonight. Both of these teams were actually okay in that category, taking care of the football last year. But there's one area where Kentucky State really struggled a season ago, and that's coming up in just a second. Second and ten. Perez fires, and that's brought down by Markel Cotton. Great Two ball. yards shy of a first down. Great ball. Puts him in a, in a third and short situation here. Third down and two for Kentucky State. But going back to that point, Kentucky State last year outscored in the fourth quarter 83-16. to It was certainly a quarter when, in which they struggled, and that's certainly got to be a point that they changed this year to have a more successful season after four and six last year. Here's third down and two. They're definitely taking their time, utilizing the entire play clock. Five left. And they're going to have to call timeout. Felton Huggins asks for and is granted the timeout with 12.18 to go. It is fourth quarter. Kentucky State still leading by seven. Yeah, you know, as we watch this and as we watch both of these teams, you can definitely see the halftime adjustments on both sides. Barring a couple turnovers, Kentucky State continued to do what they did great in the first half. The turnovers have kind of slowed them down a little bit, but we're seeing the same thing we saw in the first half from the Clark Atlanta defense. They were put in some bad positions, but they still were able to step up and make plays. Important third and two coming up here. Oh, yeah. This, this could be a pivotal, pivotal moment in the ball game. 
with the way the pace of the game is going and how quickly we've gotten here to the fourth quarter, if Clark Atlanta's not able to stop Kentucky State here in this series and keep them off the board, it's going to be tough to battle back from down two scores late in the game. See what Felton Huggins dialed up out of the timeout for third down and short, and a critical one. There's the fake. Perez steps up, and he's got a first down. Across the 30, down to the 20-yard line, and crushed at the 15. Christian Perez, the quarterback, making a play, and a big one. Nearly 50 yards on the pickup. Big-time players make big-time plays when the game's on the line. That was phenomenal. He said, put the team on my back, got out into space, got downhill. Only thing different I would like to see is a slide here at the end. <laughs> but other than that, and he tried to. He tried to get into the slide. He, he knew coach was going to say something to him in film study. <laughs> Great job there. Now they're in the red zone with 11 and a half to play. Trying to add to a touchdown lead. Handoff. Ooh. What a run. Fishback down inside the 10 to the 8. He runs so hard. He's not going to allow one person to drag him down. Here we're going to get a look at it. Look at the spin move here. Oh, nope. Great job. Brings up second and a deuce. Probably no need to be in a hurry here for Kentucky State. Not at all. We've got 10 seconds left on the play clock. I think they're going to take it all the way down. Perez surveys toward the end zone, and it's knocked out of the hands of the intended receiver, Jaden Hale, right near the goal line, so a third down and two upcoming. And that play stopped the clock. Um, I was shocked to see that there. It made sense. You know, obviously the defense was anticipating a run. They've had back-to-back -back runs on this drive. But now the clock stopped, and it's, that's exactly what Clark wanted to happen in this situation. They need the time on the board. Now let's see if they can get a stop here on third and two. Perez keeps it himself. To the five. Touchdown. Have yourself a game, young man. Christian Perez makes that drive for the Thoroughbreds, and they're back up two scores. We talked about his experience, right? And although it's not experience as a starter, he's shown, hey, I've been around this game a long time. I understand the game of football. I know where to go with the ball. I know where the opening is going to be at. He's been picking this defense apart. He's done a great job consistently, right? That first drive struggled a little bit, but since then he's been dialed in. Extra point is blocked here and no return. So that could be critical down the stretch. It's now a 13-point game, 27-14, Kentucky State in front. And the big deal, of course, is the Perez touchdown. But what did you see on the block, JB? I saw the center of that line getting blown up. Again, special teams has been one of those areas for Clark that they have stepped up in consistently throughout this entire game. So, you know, that doesn't surprise me. Still, a little bit over 10 minutes remain in this game. It's a two-possession ball game. It's not over. How about two blocks on special teams tonight for the Panthers? Yeah, you know, that special teams meeting room, they're going to talk about that, and that's going to be one of the bright spots no matter what happens to finish out this game. They're going to be happy about that. Now how do we dial that up? How do we continue that? So you got ten and a half to go. Still no need to be in a, a complete rush or hurry here, right? No, not at all. Jalen Hood has been a playmaker tonight. 
Hood with space, 40 yard line. And eventually dumped at midfield. Jalen Hood has made play after play, whether on special teams or as a receiver tonight. And Jonathan Adams finally finished him off after a return of nearly 50 yards. Yeah, and you know he knew that that was his opportunity to get in the end zone. He was a little bit upset at the end of that, but great job getting out there, getting in space, making something happen right there. Great tackle to prevent a, a major play there by Jonathan Adams, the DB out of Louisville, Kentucky. Well, we were just talking about it a moment ago, but it feels like no matter what happens at the end of this game, Clark Atlanta has certainly dominated special teams here tonight. And that first down play going nowhere with Jeremiah Gibbs. Yeah, this is this is where you finish the game. This is where your defense has to step up to secure the win. Offense has done everything they need to do here for Kansas State. Now they're going to lean on their defense to get a big stop here so they can close out the ball game. Look at the band that's been bringing it all night tonight. Energy, atmosphere, environment, all on point for this Thursday night battle. Second and long. And that's us incomplete. Try to get it back into the hands of Jalen Hood. It's third down and 11, and this is not the situation that Clark Atlanta wants to be in at this stage of the game. No, sir. You know, again, it starts with starts with first down, right? You know, if you're not able to get a positive play in first down, it kind of pushes you into, especially when you're down two scores, having to air the ball out, and that's when two things can happen. This defensive line for Kentucky State can pin their ears back and, and blitz. Uh, the secondary can go ball hawking. Williams has time. Long ball. It's caught at the 10 by Ronnie West, his first big catch of the night. And none bigger than that. 41 yards sets up first and goal for the Panthers. Beautiful throw. Here we're going to get a look at that on a rope. He let his receiver put it right where he needed to be. Great job. Clark Atlanta saying do not go anywhere. On the arm of Heath Williams, they're still right here in this game. They have an opportunity to score and make it a one-possession game. Now whistles. And play stops. Officials are meeting here. Both teams retreating to the sidelines. Not sure what that was about. I think it may have been sending Stephen Bivens off for a play. Yeah. So no timeout here. First and goal from the eight for Clark Atlanta. Clock on the move, inside nine minutes to go, and the Panthers trying to claw back to within one score again. Handoff, Gibbs, knocked down at the seven. That defensive line got great penetration there. You can see they're, they're trying to make a play. Uh, you know, one of the things that I always look for in the fourth quarter, conditioning. Who still has some left in the tank? And remember, when we had the conversation, we talked pregame or, or during the course of the week with Coach Huggins, and he said, we prepare for five quarters. Yeah. Because that way we know in the fourth quarter when everybody else is tired, we still have another quarter to go. Jimmy Edmonds on the stop there, the former quarterback turned DN. Second and goal. Williams to the end zone. Touchdown, Devion Newson, and the Panthers claw back to within seven. Another beautiful ball from Williams. Man, he is airing it out here. We talked about their running attack. We didn't give enough credit to this young man. Mm. We're going to get another look at it. Perfect ball. No one else could catch that either. No. That is a heck of a gutsy drive by the Panthers to stay in this ball game with under eight minutes to go. And that extra point is blocked. How big is that? Well, because the one was blocked down here, it's still just a one possession ball game. 
Either way, it was going to be, you know, Clark was going to need a touchdown to at least tie, even if they made that extra point. So I don't think it changes too much of the dynamic of the game, but we've talked about special teams and its impact so far, and we've seen blocked punts, blocked extra points, big returns on kickoff, you name it. Coach Huggins letting his guys have it. He, he wants this victory in his first game here. It's nothing like your first game as a head coach and having it at home in front of your faithful fans and students, in front of the alumni. He wants this win. Willie Slater chatting with his kicker before this kickoff here. Plenty of time left, 7.53 to go in this fourth quarter. And it's a seven point lead for Kentucky State. They're getting the football back. We still have not seen any actual scoring changes in this game or lead changes. It's been Kentucky State ahead for pretty much the entire game since late in the first quarter. Sometimes by one score, sometimes by two. Short boot. And a sliding catch made across the 40-yard line by LaVale Hill. Yeah, I was interested to see what Coach Slater asked his kicker to do. Uh, makes sense. You don't want to give up another big return. Special teams on both sides has been impressive. Now your defense has to come out and get a stop. You know, this is a, a major, major series. So we'll see what Perez and the crew do here on this big, important drive. You know, if all things go to plan, theoretically, Kentucky State could burn a good chunk of this remaining clock off and leave Clark Atlanta with not much time to work with. Absolutely. There's the toss. Brought in by Cotton. Chased out of bounds near midfield after a first down. Yeah. You know, you've got to make You've got to make tackles at the first point of contact. That's what I'm seeing a lot of. Both of these teams have done a great job not allowing one person to bring them down or the first person that touches them to bring them down. Can't expect Kentucky State to be in a hurry here, right? No, they're, they're gonna use as much of this clock as they possibly can. Hill to the 40. Hill still on his feet. And brought down inside the 35-yard line. Great run there from Hill, and he's looking at the offensive line saying, let's keep eating. Here we can get another look at it. He just got planted his foot, got north and south so quick. He knew where the hole was. And again, I mean, just running with that, that sheer dominance and wanting to run somebody over, it's beautiful to see. Each play, too, winding down that fourth quarter clock. Inside six and a half minutes to go. Kentucky State leading 27 to 20. Screen pass. Juggled for a moment, but then caught. Jude Santana with his second grab of the night. Gain of nine on first down. Yeah, you know, ever since that first drive, I will say Kentucky State's offense, barring a couple turnovers, they've been rolling. They've been clicking on all cylinders. This offense is really good. Offense that certainly seems improved over last year, averaging only 21 points a game a season ago. Hill gets the toss, turns it back near the 20, and then gets level. And play will be stopped here. Both guys shaken up after a huge and violent collision near the 20-yard line. Wow. That is Hill down for Kentucky State and looks like Howard for Clark Atlanta. Looks like a little Oklahoma drill there in real life. Both of them came in hard. Oh, my goodness. Well, definitely contact more above the shoulders than I initially thought. It, it looked like it was a, 
a strong shoulder hit, but both guys are down now, and there's some serious concern from the Clark Atlanta sideline, especially all their players down to an E. Same now for Kentucky State. And we have a stoppage here at Alumni Stadium. Kentucky State still leading by seven and an injury timeout. credit repair company to fix my credit. Hold the phone, man. You can do it yourself with Credit Versio. That's way too hard. Call the credit repair company. Most credit repair companies only work on one or two accounts at a time, making it slow and expensive. You won't figure that out for months. <laughs> Ignore him. Credit Versio's brilliant software scans all three credit bureaus, finds the accounts that are hurting your score, and guides you through the entire process. Anyone can do it. Let's fast forward and see the results. <laughs> wow, I fixed my own credit and saved hundreds. You can do this. Visit creditversio.com. This all new Aria is an elegant EV. Yeah, with 389 horsepower. And all wheel drive. Ooh. It's beautiful. It's a beast. It's electric. With an edge. Oh, let's go with that. Back here in Frankfurt, first and 10 from the 20. And the first down carry goes to Chad Alexander. And he loses one on first down. Good news, JB, is that both guys looked okay eventually walking off the sideline, but a scary collision on that last play. Yep. Yeah, I mean, and again, I mean, we know that this game is a violent sport. Uh, we know that hits like that are going to take place. So it's always good to see them get up and walk off under their own power. Five minutes to go in this fourth quarter. And it's still a seven-point lead, but Kentucky State not only knocking on the door of a touchdown, but any points here would make things difficult on Clark Atlanta. Field goal would do a lot for Kentucky State. Perez, as the pocket collapses, inside the 10, takes off himself, down to the six. And here in the second half especially, it's, it's Christian been, Perez has made some huge plays with his feet. Yeah, it's been the Perez show here in the second half. He's extending plays. He's making things happen. He saw he didn't have anybody open. Got downfield, made something happen. Now 4.20 to go. Perez and the offense going to burn down as much clock as they can here inside the goal-to-go situation. Perez to the middle, still trucking forward and churns down to the three. I'll say Perez and this Kentucky State offense have done a phenomenal job controlling the clock. You know, they've, they've paid attention to where they're at within the play clock. You're not seeing a whole lot of, I mean, I, don't, I think we've seen maybe one delay of game yeah. all game long. They've done a phenomenal job really utilizing the entire play clock, taking it down and controlling the, the game clock. If you're Willie Slater, are you thinking about using a timeout soon if they don't get in on this next play? It's tough because you want you know that either way you're going to have to score twice. So you want both of those timeouts. It won't matter. It's a touchdown. DeMarco Fishback with his second score of the night. That was a demonstrative drive here in the fourth quarter in a situation where you needed to put some points on the board. That's how you finish it.
Extra point sails through. 34 to 20. Kentucky State on top. And the Thoroughbreds now in full command. And just one defensive stop away from a week one victory here at home. You know, they've just put together outside again. We, we, we keep talking about the turnovers. They had those two turnovers, but outside of that, they've just strung together more positive drives. They've made more things happen. You can tell that they want it. They came out here ready to fight, ready to prove everybody wrong, ready to set the tone and let the conference know who they are. They're doing a great job doing that. Yeah, well, no matter what happens, it certainly does not feel like a team that's going to finish 12th in this league. It just no. doesn't. It just looks like it's way too good. Obviously, there was so many question marks coming into this season. A lot of folks and coaches and media not knowing how to vote because of the new head coach and kind of the new look squad here for Kentucky State. But they have passed a week one test, assuming they can hang on in the final couple minutes. Yeah, fair to note. You know, a lot of moving pieces. They have transfers coming in. It's difficult to know exactly what you're seeing. So, you know, that, that ranking is less of um, – uh, a, indicative of them as a team and more of you know, just people not knowing. Penalty marker comes in way away from the ball. Jalen Hood brought down at the 27. We'll check the penalty. Looks like it could be a hold going against Clark in Atlanta. Here we're going to get another look at it. I didn't see the hold, but, oh, the, yeah, it looked like a block in the back there. So it is a hold. Can't afford to give up many yards on this drive, and the Panthers have hung in there tonight. They have made this thing close. They have made some really important plays Offensively, the last drive was a gutsy drive to be sure. But now it's going to take a long shot for them to try and get a score and get the ball back again. Yeah, and you have to remember that even though three minutes left, 14 points, it's a tough and tall task, you want to see how your team finishes. You want to see them compete to that final horn. Good start to the drive as Newson makes the catch heading out of bounds. Close to a first down. Another beautiful throw from Williams. His tosses have been pretty on point tonight. I think the quarterback play has been good for both sides. Yeah, that was a phenomenal ball. Perez has looked comfortable for Kentucky State. Lots to build on here for both sides going forward. Despite the first, first week win or loss, Williams this time dumps it out of bounds. Third and short coming up. Obviously, all four down territory now for Clark Atlanta. For sure. This weather's been absolutely amazing for football. This has been a great night. Fans are great here tonight. Band has brought the energy. Good environment here in Frankfurt. Third down and one. And that pass broken up. Nearly picked off near the 30-yard line. That's a... Great play in the secondary by Cameron Hinson, the Carson Newman transfer, junior from Georgia, making that play to force fourth down and one. Yeah, you could tell he was a little bit mad at himself. He, he read it and jumped the route. He felt like that should have been his pick six. Final few moments of this fourth quarter. That time Williams hit as he throws. Ball falls incomplete. Clark Atlanta fails to get a first down. And that should seal it. Williams took a hard hit on what could be his last toss of the night. Yeah, I don't think Williams realized for a second that it was fourth down. Here, gets hit as he throws. Yeah, he got smoked by Jeremiah Owens. Owens has been a big difference maker tonight on defense for Kentucky State. 
Experienced guy, senior, leading at D-end. Led the squad in sacks and tackles for loss last year. Well, we talked about the strength of the defensive line. Yeah. We knew that that was going to be a point of emphasis for this Kentucky State squad. Pickup of one on first down. Doesn't look like Willie Slater's using a timeout here. Two-score game with two minutes to go, essentially waving the white flag. But again, lots of positives to take out of this first game for Willie Slater, even though he'll go back to Atlanta with a loss. Yeah, you know, this is an opportunity uh, to be a teachable moment for his squad to be able to go sit down and film and point out a couple different things that they do, and it's a different ball game. Uh, it, it may look that way, look like it was you know, stretched a little further with a 14-point win, but the truth is they were a lot closer than what that score shows. One, one or two plays going a different way, and we have a different outcome here. Stacked up for no gain. And there's really no question about that. I mean, you, you think about the way this game is played, and I think there's definitely cases to be made that both teams will finish in the top 10 of this league. It's a 13-team 13 13 SIAC league. And both have showcased some serious talent. And I think it's these kind of teams that can make other teams near the top of the league on alert for an upset each and every week that they come in, especially when you come to a place like this that has had a good environment tonight. Thoroughbreds feel like they have good chances when they're playing at home. And a game that was only decided by a couple of plays this evening is going to tilt the Thoroughbreds' way on their home field. So Kentucky State will have to run one more play as the clock ticks down. How about Felton Huggins Jr. getting a win in his very first game as a college head coach? Here at home, no better place to have it. Let me see if they're getting the Gatorade bath ready for him. I don't see it yet. Well, his demeanor on the sideline, the way that he carries himself is more like an offensive coordinator than anything else. Victory formation now for Kentucky State. Crowd energized, sideline pumping him up. 4 ticks left and so Clark Atlanta will have to come out one more time. Students love it here at home. And what was a great Thursday night crowd witnessing a Kentucky State home win. Looks like they're going to the officials are signaling that they've got to run one more play here. Willie Slater ready to go back to the drawing board and make some adjustments for week two. Next week, Clark Atlanta has a tall task in front of them. They'll host Fort Valley State. That's a group that's receiving votes in the poll. Kentucky State, meanwhile, back at home next Saturday against Tuskegee. And, of course, that's the former stomping grounds of Willie Slater, now the head coach for Clark Atlanta. Another team receiving votes. So a couple of teams will face squads that have high hopes in the preseason next week. Yeah, it's going to be a tough schedule all year long as I look at who Kentucky State faces. But they're, they're not backing down from anybody. You know, this game right here, again, puts the conference on notice, lets them know. In these first couple weeks, you mentioned they have Tuskegee next week. Then they go to Allen. Then they come home. They have Fort Valley State and Albany State. I mean, that's a gauntlet. Yeah. <laughs> That'll officially do it. Williams taken down on the last play of the game. And it's a week one victory for Kentucky State. 34-20. to 20. Kind of hovered between one and two scores the entire second half. But it is the thoroughbreds that come away victorious. And it does feel like the, the one of the big drives of the game JB was the first half drive toward the end of the first half with Kentucky State punching it in with just three seconds left. A big three-minute drive to put them up. Two scores going into the locker room. Absolutely. Absolutely. We saw ball control. Uh, ball control there from Kentucky State. They were able to control that second half and just wind it down. Overall thoughts from tonight, JB? What's your takeaways, and what are you looking at going forward with these two squads? 
The biggest thing I take away, um, watching both of these teams, the offense for Kentucky State, they, they do a phenomenal job. As I said, barring those two turnovers, almost almost a flawless game after that first series. Uh, so you know, I'm looking to see them continue to produce and produce at a high level. And then also both of these teams have strong defenses. The defense are going to carry them a long way even when the offense struggles. So I'm looking to see both of these teams continue for Kentucky State to, to build on this moment, to continue to get better, continue to you know, fix some of those things where for Clark Atlanta, for them to continue to you know, learn from this opportunity, learn from this moment. They had a lot of bright sparks, spots, especially on special teams um, and defense. So being able to utilize those as coachable, teachable moments. That was Christian Perez diving in there. That was a critical touchdown late in the game. Perez made some big plays on the ground in the second half for Kentucky State. All right, we'll step aside. 34-20, Kentucky State victorious here tonight in the week one opener over Clark Atlanta. I'm a millionaire. I'm not a millionaire. I'm a millionaire. I'm not a millionaire. Crypto is complicated, but as a tax expert with crypto experience, you can hand your taxes off to me. You do your thing, we've got your taxes. Into it, TurboTax Live. Hey, it's Noah. Let me show you how I decked out my dorm for less with Amazon. I wear a lot of hats. This one's pretty self-explanatory. These are my colognes. Oh, the snap. I assume you guys are starving, so let's see what we got. A single plum, a lone Oreo, and some loose tortillas. So I went all out with my home theater system. Stadium seating. Popcorn bowl. And a big old blanket. Oh, <laughs> We never just see the numbers. We see the people. Detroit has just changed so much. You can see what it once was. And then I think about what it can be. As an entrepreneur, it's about how I can give them the tools to empower themselves. If we can just all do something small, all the small things will start to amount to something big. That's why we're here, to help make it happen. J.P. Morgan Chase. Back here for the final time in Frankfurt, 34-20 win for Kentucky State here tonight over Clark Atlanta, putting a bow on this victory. Justin Brandley, fantastic win for KSU. Time now for a look at tonight's final stats. Yeah, I mean, you, you see it all right there. Uh, two things that stand out, obviously the total yardage. Kentucky State did a phenomenal job offensively. And then the turnovers. The turnover battle was won. Um, we talked about this before. If you don't turn the ball over, score more, you're going to win the ball game. That, that sounds about right. And a good way to finish this up as you see some of the highlights from tonight. Plenty of fun football in week one. And it sets the stage for a fantastic year here across HBCUs nationwide and especially in the SIAC. This conference is loaded, and Coach Huggins gets the Gatorade bath as this night concludes. For our entire crew, Justin Brantley, I'm Derek Decker, saying so long and God bless from Frankfurt. It's Kentucky State with a win, 34-20. to